to the jungle.
Dobré dopoledne, vážené dámy, vážení pánové. Dovolte mi přivítat vás v těchto krásných prostorech na konferenci Věda a výzkum v boji s pandémí COVID-19. Mé jméno je Michal Pazour, jsem z Technologického centra a mám tu čest dnešní konferenci, tak skvěle obsazenou konferenci moderovat. We want to show how research institutions have coped with this crisis, a rather surprising crisis, which uh, has had an impact not only on research but on uh, society as such. We have two panels in the morning who will focus on research infrastructures and their importance when combating the pandemic. And in the afternoon, oh, we'll uh, uh, have a, a detailed look at uh, how institutions have uh, developed or transformed so that the impact of the pandemic is as moderate as possible on the society. So first of all, uh, some technicalities. This is a web streamed conference. So those of you who cannot attend here in this uh, uh, hall can uh, get connected and uh, watch or follow the conference, the web stream with interpreting into English. Now another uh, technical uh, Remark regards uh, hygiene. Many of you are wearing masks. This is a recommendation of the public health authority. Of course, speakers don't have to wear the masks because we would not understand them. But if some of you don't have a mask, you can pick it up. Uh, we have them outside at the desk also. Uh, let's uh, try to be respectful uh, to each other. We have sanitizers, uh, you can put your hands, and also distancing is recommended. Because this is a conference about combating the pandemic, so we should certainly not spread it. And uh, secondly, logistics, so we have the morning panel, then we'll have the lunch break, and there are three events, a press conference with members of the government and some major personalities of R&D, there'll be lunch, and during the lunch break, you can also see the research infrastructure of CZ open screen. This conference uh, is organized by the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports with the Council for Research, uh, Development and Innovation and the presidents of Czech universities, also the Center of Technology of the Academy of Sciences and the Institute of Molecular Genetics. We are now in the building of the Institute and I'll ask Petr Traber, who is the director of the Institute, to welcome you. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome on behalf of the management of the Institute of Molecular Genetics. We are a meeting here. We were one of the academic sites participating uh, in the fight against the pandemic, COVID-19, and I hope we have contributed to containing the pandemic. Uh, in the Institute, uh, uh, we organized a check open screen, and during several days, uh, it uh, was transformed from a laboratory into a lab that could handle biomaterials, and we have processed over seven and a half thousand tests. Also in Bioset, uh, uh, we also carried out a number of tests, so altogether 12,000 tests, uh, samples from patients, from points of collection. So when we started using the infrastructure, we were ready to test tens of thousands of samples, which didn't happen. So at the mo 
moment the infrastructure is frozen, but of course we can reopen it. Thank you very much and enjoy the conference. I would like to thank the director of the institute and now, because we are a bit late, uh, so, uh, because of the delay, let's start. We have a wonderful panel. We have the Deputy Minister, Minister of Industry and Trade, Karel Havlicek, also Minister of Transport. We have the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports, Robert Plaga, Ministry of Health, Adam Wojciech, and also the first uh, Deputy uh, Chairman of the Council for Research, Development and Innovation. Petr Dvořák. <laughs> Thank you for the applause. That goes to the panel, of course. And now I'd like to ask the Deputy Minister, Mr. Havlíček, to take the floor. Uh, dear colleagues and distinguished colleagues, <laughs> Ministers, I'm glad we can meet and I apologize uh, that uh, we are a bit late because of me, but uh, because of the railway incidents, I had to answer many questions, check television and so on. <coughs> but I wanted to speak about the situation, about what's ahead and maybe to recapitulate the situation from the economic viewpoint, because also uh, regarding the Council for Research, Development, Innovation, it is expected uh, that the government and uh, uh, my ministry will try to uh, get uh, resources. In the coronavirus crisis, uh, trend uh, that was uh, set up in the past when we increased investment into R&D and innovation in a really significant way. And speaking here, this is really the Academy of Sciences in 2010, 11, there was a crisis in funding science, but then uh, we got about half a billion a year on year. Uh, increment and about a year ago we managed to reach the peak of 2008 and 9. And I'm saying this because without resources there can be no research. So, and of course we need more resources. There is so called GERD indicator. Unfortunately, <coughs> we have moved ahead. It's 1.93% uh, now, which is quite a big amount from European resources and private resources of 100 billion crowns. So we also got almost to 2%, which is good. In Germany there are 3%, South Korea is more and so on. But let's be objective. It's not just about money, but research has to be first rate. So we have set up uh, in V a new system of funding, more generous system, and a different system of uh, evaluation or assessment. If we put more money into research, which is good news, and also we are more strict and demanding. So this is really uh, good news uh, twice, I would say. So it's also a matter where we put, where we place the resources, if it's basic or applied research. <laughs> And uh, I'm a layman. I think either uh, research is uh, good or not. So, of course, uh, logically, the success rate is lower uh, in academic research. Um, so we have to decide whether to focus more on the applied sphere. <coughs> so there, the results must be really good. We have set up a framework called the Innovation Strategy, the Country for the Future 
we uh, gathered uh, academicians, scientists, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, government institutions, and they are in one club, uh, so to speak. They will support and respect each other. It will not be based on uh, the fact that uh, there is either business or science, science with the intellectual potential and business making money. No, in fact, they need each other. So, one of my ambitions, because I think I was the, uh, the engine or driving force of this, is that we recognize mutually our positions because the results of our research and uh, our companies are the results of all of us, uh, of the Czech Republic. So we really have to fight together within one institution. And that institution, that is the Czech Republic. So uh, also scaling is important, scaling of universities. And I'm sure the Minister of Education will also mention it. Uh, he's in charge, but in the Council for Search Generation, uh, this is one of the goals. And of course, not everyone is happy. We have scaling, is it objective or should be <laughs> split it, to have disciplines and so on. It has to be improved, but at least the system has been introduced. We are not afraid to say someone is the best, and we have to be able to say that not everyone is the best. We must not be average and say, OK, we are not so uh, badly off. Uh, but uh, we, always someone is the best, someone is mediocre, some, someone is under average. And if we say this is uh, an under average uh, institution, but it's uh, not a, a catastrophe, it's also uh, saying, OK, you should uh, improve, you should try harder. Uh, you don't have to despise the institution. So scaling of universities provokes emotions, especially in those who are maybe at the end of the ranking. But uh, what matters is that we have criteria. So. Uh, this is important for the evaluation in all the structures and all, and this is related to <coughs> research of quality. I could mention the new programs and so on we introduced at the time of the crisis. So we have <coughs> 8 million requests in applied research. Well, uh, divide one billion, we may uh, add another. We have the programs, the country for the future, uh, technology program, and we have a we have huge resources, uh, programs of application, innovation, cooperation, all that are R and D programs. <laughs> Applied research is uh, really focused on. We have to invest, uh, as, as I said, invest out of the crisis, to get out of the crisis. Well, uh, I mentioned the railway accident, and of course the railway is not uh, uh, concrete, and we don't put money just into railways. Uh, money also goes into R&D. It's not classical investment, it's uh, extra. And we are going to raise the funding for R&D, which is my duty. And during the crisis, we said, OK, let's invest and uh, defeat the crisis. Uh, let's invest into innovations and for uh, the council, I'm going to present to the government a higher budget than we had out of 25 billion. We increased it and will still go up. So 
also with regard to the fact that we, of course, have this uh, huge deficit, but we are not going to forget R and D will allocate resources, of course, will be a bit more strict, demanding, so that the money goes to the institutions who do good work. So I am certainly not the one who uh, will calculate who is the first or the last in the first group and so on, will be number three. Uh, but uh, 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 of course, uh, uh, in uh, research institute, in the infrastructure, we have to advance. So anyway, so uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Havlíček, for her optimistic outlook as to the investment in infrastructure, which is one way how to improve the situation of the Czech Republic and how to uh, grapple with the crisis and uh, eliminate the economic uh, shutdown. Now, I'd like to ask Mr. Robert Plaka, Minister of Education, Youth and Sports, to kindly take the floor. Thank you very much for your introduction. But you are right, I've been the longest serving Minister of Education in recent years. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to have the opportunity of welcoming you here after Mr. Havlicek's presentation. That was about the steps taken by the government so far. And uh, thanks for that, since the expenditure, volumes of expenditure have been pretty positive. But I'll try to take a different perspective. The long or oh, consistent massive investments in scientific infrastructure, large infrastructure, and I guess I can say that uh, the development over the last five years is something well known to me. We at uh, the uh, um, uh, Research Development and Innovation Council at Mayes uh, concluded it was still inadequate. Well, in the long run, we can uh, uh, do some uh, measurements, so we can measure it, we can evaluate it, we can advocate or justify the developments, but uh, the essential thing, which uh, is great, has become visible and obvious and tangible now during the crisis, uh, COVID-19 crisis. Uh, the unexpected thing that I mean, this uh, pandemic uh, was quickly responded to by you and many of uh, our other colleagues in, involved in research today. We'll see and, uh, uh, how the response went. And it's uh, um, an answer rather than an argument for those who are very uh, pessimistic about the investments. We'll talk about the applied uh, research, but uh, we first need the robust, uh, fundamental research. Only then we can uh, properly follow from that. And the examples that will be mentioned here present specific answer to all kinds of outstanding questions or questions saying that uh, higher education institutions, universities are black holes and are inefficient, do not deliver, etc. Well, we won't perhaps be amongst uh, or on top rankings, but it doesn't matter. The third important thing to underline is that scientific community, scientific ecosystem does work properly, and the funds that all 
also, together with major interventions from ASIF, have um, paid off, if for no other reason than uh, because in medical sciences, social sciences, and also when developing face masks, uh, medical masks, etc., are some that is uh, our republic, and you are experts manage to quickly respond. Now, if we say we'll uh, add massive investments in the research infrastructure now, but it will be perhaps too late. But thanks to our investments in the past and also massive uh, top-ups from our national budget, thanks to that we were capable of quickly responding to the crisis, which is great, and we shall talk about it today. It would be sad and silly to lose that. That means to release um, uh, the food from the accelerator or gas. Uh, I agree with Mr. Havlicek that now uh, the time will come that will decide. Uh, perhaps I shouldn't um, I mean, speak in a political manner, but it is easier, of course, to spend when uh, there is a boom, but uh, um, research, development, innovation, education, uh, whether it is the priority of any respective state is clearly seen in the period of economic uh, decline or in a crisis. I'm sure that if we now slow down, we shall deny and reject all we have done uh, so far. This conference, which I thank you for, not only for speaking or presenting uh, this uh, during this conference, what uh, can be achieved, and you will present the benefits uh, that are the outcome of uh, investments. Uh, you will give specific examples uh, to our audiences, and I will only appreciate if we share with the general public uh, uh, this uh, kind of information and us. Uh, we are well aware of that. Well, once, and it has been proven clearly, as long as you have data, as long as you have capacities, it would be fitting to tap it, to exploit it. Because ahead of us is not only COVID-19, but all the research infrastructures, including large research infrastructure, is the perhaps later but critical infrastructure of the state that can be used in a number of other areas. We have problems with land fund, uh, uh, drought, uh, climate change, uh, aging population, illnesses or diseases that, of course, uh, come and go, but doesn't uh, and it, of course, doesn't have to be uh, an illness or pandemic like COVID-19. Well, we have to uh, far more or more intensively communicate with research community or researchers' communities. And it's not, um, uh, I mean, a fight for funds going to apply it, uh, research since uh, without a robust fundamental research we could hardly do anything. And um, the challenges of today and of the future is something we have to be prepared for. Education, research, development, science um, has always been clearly called the investment in the future, but now we see uh, it is the investment in the current days. Uh, Thank you, Minister. 
research uh, infrastructure and research community has uh, undergone a test, a stress test. Also, the Ministry of uh, Health uh, has been put to a stress test, and I would now like to ask the Minister of uh, Health, Mr. Adam Wojciech, to take the floor. The truth is that the stress test is as yet not over, but uh, we'll have uh, to get used to it. Coronavirus has been with us, is, and will continue to be with us in the future, I am afraid. Nevertheless, let me thank, let me express thanks to the Academy of Sciences, to the um, Academia of Scientific and uh, Research Community for having contributed. Uh, I can see Mr. Konvalinka here, uh, uh, but uh, it's not only him, many other people have uh, helped a lot. They have uh, rendered service, they have selflessly exerted efforts, etc. And it is not only a matter of projects, on a uh, stick project, but also very active uh, approach uh, to the issue. Over a couple of weeks, new testing capacities have been built or developed, which uh, subsequently have not been fully used. But it was only thanks to the successful control of uh, the issue. Uh, fortunately, we have prevented the uncontrollable or uncontrolled uh, spread of the uh, disease so infection. Nevertheless, uh, if there is uh, this potential second wave that might occur in the autumn of this year, we will certainly use all the testing capacities and will be grateful for having them. Ministry of Health does fully support uh, research in um, healthcare or medical sciences. You well know that. I know mean, many of you are aware of that. Last year, we have spent 1.7 billion uh, crowns uh, on research, both uh, in the form of supporting institutions and also uh, through the Agency for Medical Research, uh, through grants. Results have been very satisfactory, for sure. This field or discipline has always been given top priority. COVID-19 is um, not only about testing capacity, so the fight against COVID is not all about testing capacity and testing facilities, but we shall also uh, put, announce a call for uh, other projects in the field of uh, that are associated with COVID-19 crisis has brought about many, many problems, many stress tests, uh, sleepless nights. But um, similar crises give us a chance to improve uh, or reach an improvement in a number of areas. And research and science is essential in this respect, which is why we have asked uh, the Research Development Innovation Council to um, earmark 100 million crowns uh, for tackling this uh, issue. And I'm happy we have this um, plan, Professor Primrose, the planning potentiary for uh, DNI. And uh, together with the Agency for Medical or Health uh, Research, we have been drawing up an agenda or program uh, in order to be able to have it published or publicized before the end of um, the summer. 
uh, cellular and molecular biology related um, projects, um, which means improving diagnostics and uh, diagnostic procedures, which is where I see a major potential or gap, uh, faster diagnostics or diagnosing uh, improved uh, process of um, diagnosing the cases, which is important in case of mass testing, which will be the case in the future. We will have to live uh, with uh, the virus for some time still. But uh, primary care is uh, essential, especially in case um, of uh, persons who are suspected of uh, having COVID-19. But intensive care is also essential, well prepared. Um, intensive care is important. You well know that we have managed to cope with um, uh, the problem at the um, intensive care units. Uh, we have done really well compared to other countries, but there still is room for improvement or rather development. Uh, mental health, for instance, uh, surgical procedures. Now, if you uh, refer to surveys all over the world, obviously, together with COVID-19, there is mental health uh, or there are mental health problems. Uh, since uh, the psyche has suffered the most in the course of uh, the crisis, uh, this has been our um, priority for quite some time already. And we have to focus on it again in uh, research and development. Immunology, uh, the existence of uh, a geographical, uh, so to say, a distinguishing or distinct variants or uh, types of the virus in different geographical locations. All that is of interest. I will do our utmost to have the program announced or the call announced um, by the end of uh, the summer. Once again, let me express acknowledgments to the science or scientific community for their contribution, and I do look forward to the cooperation in the future. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you, Minister. As we heard, there will be many other challenges uh, related to uh, this matter. We uh, now I'd like to ask the first Vice Chair of the Research Development and Innovation Council, Mr. Peter Dvořák, to take the floor. Uh, good morning. It's always difficult uh, to be to speak as the last uh, in the panel of those who welcome you here. So I have uh, decided to present some sort of general um, consideration or presentation of what we have been faced with. So, in spite of all the obstacles and issues brought about uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which has been very bad, of course, and severe. It has also um, brought about some pluses or positives. Uh, I read all kinds of um, journals or periodicals, and I concluded uh, there were three pluses or pros. Governments of many countries, more advanced countries, um, can realize that investments in research and development are certainly worth the while, are essential. And we heard that already during the presentation given by Mr. Havlicek. 1,000 different sources uh, donated uh, almost three fourth of a uh, billion dollars. A billion dollars. Uh, for instance, NIH, uh, the Institute of, um, uh, well, uh, increased the budget 1.5 fold times 
1.8 billion dollars they received as an additional sum uh, next to their budget and that was due or as a consequence or simply of the pandemic research is focused uh, on attacking or rather grappling with uh, this um, urgent issue if you uh, study COVID-19, you will realize that the mankind has never ever uh, met with such an inverted commas, uh, smart virus, not only all this big genome, 300 bases, but uh, roughly, but also since it has this uh, repair system or system re repairing mutations that oftentimes can help uh, to re uh, decrease the virulence um, as proofreading system or on the cells it uh, spots or seeks or identifies the uh, point of or site of entry which is uh, present uh, on all, almost all cells. And one uh, American scientist wrote somewhere or said to some journalists that once he found the place of attachment of the virus uh, to the cells, uh, he couldn't sleep. He had two sleepless nights. Well, and uh, clinical signs or symptoms are so heterogeneous of this um, infection that we are really kind of lost. We um, do not know how to so fight it. Therefore, it's very relevant to deal with it. Now, second, the second conclusion. Uh, the face of science as to the accessibility or availability of information sources has grown. I, if you have summed up the number of publications and papers on COVID as of yesterday on Web of Science, if you take a scientific articles, there were 23,000 pieces of which 82 percent of uh, the, in the open access um, regime that means accessible to all and um, in spite of all our efforts uh, and uh, despite all the programs uh, impacted uh, it's only 40 percent in other cases so COVID has um, opened up a prevailing part of science. Out of this 23,000 publications uh, uh, actually were published in the last month. So there is a huge increase in the numbers. The Czech Republic, and I, I'm not talking about testing, but about the science, like the structure of the virus and uh, ways to combat or fight uh, the virus. Well, the Czech science hasn't been that successful as yet. And um, perhaps this is due to the check systems of these 23,000 uh, materials published or papers, ours were only 0.09%, uh, um, several dozens only, which uh, compared to Romania, which has 40, Nepal uh, 41, and we have uh, 30 plus. So. 35, I guess. So that's an uh, effect of life. Why? I don't know. Perhaps it's due to the rigidity of Czech scientists and more conservative approach. And also, you know, um, the uh, ch uh, demanding um, fact that you have to switch from one thing to another overnight. In Italy, the situation was almost the same before pandemic, but now uh, they have 
2,000 great scientific uh, papers of the 23,000. For Czechs, uh, this is difficult, but it's also difficult because, you know, if you want to, uh, to ask grant agency for a change in the focus of some activity is troublesome or it takes time simply. Last positive uh, or last opportunity uh, I see in COVID is that it um, accelerated um, cooperation among the scientists um, incredibly. And that's obvious in the 82% of open access uh, of all the papers published. It is necessary to share information and to fight against that uh, together. It's not uh, like having one neutralizing antibody, um, which was uh, published as uh, doing well or functioning well, will tackle it simply cooperation or collaboration is a must both at the stage of research and at the stage of clinical trials as well. It will simply necessitate global cooperation. And now the cons are that uh, there are some sort of uh, indications at uh, non-solidarity, lack of solidarity, like African countries uh, published or proclaimed some so to say declaration that it should not be set aside. Uh, that uh, they are afraid they are kind of sidetracked, side that they are um, out of the mainstream and sidetracked in Africa. So in spite of all the horrors uh, brought about uh, by COVID-19, uh, there also are positive changes in the face of or uh, shape of science, uh, which I am grateful for. So I wish uh, you uh, fruitful deliberations or talks. Now, thank you. I'd like to thank uh, all the first speakers. <coughs> I can see you have many questions, but the Q&A uh, uh, session will be after the second panel, after we have learned uh, everything about the infrastructures, and you can speak uh, or address those who were there at the beginning of the outbreak. I'd like to thank Mr. Havlicek, uh, then Mr. Plaga, Mr. Wojtek, and also the first deputy, uh, Mr. Petr Dvořák. And now, let's start with the second part of the morning session. Petr Dvořák. Uh, uh, has mentioned the fact that in the Czech Republic there were not so many publications about COVID, but many practical things were done to cope with the situation. So the first speaker who was involved uh, from uh, the Institute of uh, Chemical Biochemical Research. Uh, he is also the uh, Deputy President for Science University, and also he participated in the coordination of the scientific uh, sites. Uh, so it's Dr. Jan Konvalinka. Uh, distinguished uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, directors, uh, magnificent colleagues, uh, and dear friends, uh, it's a great pleasure to speak about what the academic initiative of the Academy of Sciences and uh, universities of the Czech Republic did uh, during the time of uh, the coronavirus crisis. And let me start uh, with what was it about? This is coronavirus. Uh, 
one of the seven human uh, coronaviruses. Four of them just cause uh, seasonal colds, and three of them have caused uh, uh, widespread pandem pandemics. Uh, it's SARS, uh, which from bats uh, via civet cats came in uh, 1993. MERS, which again from bats uh, via camels, uh, came around 2009, killed several thousands of people. And then uh, coronavirus 2, SARS, which uh, had the abbreviation NCON SARS. My students call it NCON uh, it's a coronavirus, uh, SARS-2, again uh, originating in bats, and uh, the uh, hosts uh, are pangolin, a bizarre animal. Then uh, it has infected about 13 million persons, and it has killed over 500,000, so shortened their lives. So here we have coronavirus, a beautiful virus. You can see the corona, the proteins on the lymphatic membrane. My colleague Tachezi says it's a most beautiful virus. I prefer HIV, but it's really very pretty about testing. So some molecular biology. My dream was to teach some minister molecular biology. We have the Ministry of Education here. The other ministers have gone away. So for five minutes, I'll try to teach all of you who don't need it, and the ministers and the deputies some molecular biology testing for COVID-19. You all know it from the media. We have two principles. Either we want to learn whether there are antibodies uh, in the tested person, antibodies against the pathogen. It's a very simple procedure, very fast and cheap. What you need is just a drop of blood to detect it. But there are many disadvantages. It takes about two weeks. After the uh, person uh, comes across a pathogen, and we also don't know whether the person is really ill. We only know that the person uh, came in contact with the pathogen, so it's not suitable uh, to detect whether the patient uh, can infect others. Tell that to people in Karvina. It's not suitable. No. Uh, then uh, P PCR, we uh, detect whether there is uh, RNA. But this is more demanding. It takes hours. It's more expensive, and it's rather unpleasant to have the swab. You there are tears in your eyes, and it's not easy to do. It has to be an X because 30% of the swabs are false negative. The advantage is that we can see whether the virus is multiplying, and we know the infectivity of the patient here. You can see this unpleasant swab on the left. Then the swab is uh, put into a test tube where it multiplies or reproduces, it is lysed, and then it can be put into a machine which does the RT-PCR uh, to find out. <laughs> uh, so how is it done? PCR has been discussed so many months, so let's focus for three minutes. Uh, how PCR works. There are several simple facts that kids learn, and even an average minister can understand it, a government minister. So you can see when the temperature goes up above a certain level, so you can see the double helix <laughs> as uh, it, uh, uh, in fact, uh, disintegrates, and then we can do copies. 
So what we need is a template. The DNA cannot be reconstructed, only copied. It's a copy. Then you need a primer. You need the beginning of the second strand. So the method here, it is described. And uh, don't, don't be afraid, I once showed it in Libots at a center for seniors, for pensioners. I showed it to the people, to the old people, and we did the PCR. So you can learn it too. You can see the double helix of the DNA. And it was Carrie Mellis who in fact, invented it in California one day as uh, he almost had a car accident when he got this idea. Then he got the Nobel Prize because he discovered this method. It's based on several things I mentioned a moment ago, the double DNA helix. We heat it up, it disintegrates into the blue strands, and we add the specific primers uh, corresponding to the sequence. The primers uh, sit on the DNA. We add the polymerase, which just copies DNA, but it has a template, so it synthesizes. Uh, uh, and you can see the new chains, the red ones. You wouldn't get the Nobel Prize for that. But the idea is that you reheat it. You have four strands which uh, disintegrate again. And when you cool them down, the primers get on. And the polymerase, the poor polymerase, just copies other strands. And now we have four strands. So now we have eight new ones. And what do we do? Those grannies knew it. We reheat it again. They disintegrate. We get the templates. And we cool them down again. Polymerase, polymerase, and again the poor polymerase just copies 16 strands, 32, uh, etc. Uh, 256, and then there's 1 million copies out of a single strand. And if you do it 60 times, the product will weigh more than planet Earth, and that would be the end of the world. That will not happen because we'll run out of primers. But we can make a huge amount of DNA. That's why we call it a chain reaction. So out of uh, a single molecule or tens of molecules, we can do it. We do so much uh, DNA. We can detect it, so we f can find out whether there was this RNA present. Uh, this was already done in the 1980s, uh, and in this uh, institute, colleagues of Peter Bartuniak and others, we have the equipment, technology, and specialists. When at the end of February or March, uh, we realized that the RNA testing is the bottleneck, then Maybe I was a bit naive, but uh, we said, OK, we can do it. We have the machines. But uh, Bartuniak was one of the first. Uh, but there were, of course, many others. Schalke, Pospisla, and Berno, Marian, Hajduk, and Olamouts. So we just decided uh, to do what we can do. So the chief laboratories are in this slide. You can see the order, how they uh, uh, were licensed. The Sharka Special, well, I think, was the first one. She will speak in the afternoon, then in Benna, uh, and in all modes, almost at the same time. Marianne Hajduk will also speak, uh, and then from the Institute of Molecular Translation. Uh, medicine, other colleagues, colleagues from Budějovic, uh, Dr. Lukáš, uh, then from Vestet, uh, we, from Biosev, that was Ruth Tahezi, and here in this excellent institute, Dr. Petr Baduniak from <coughs> Open Screen. He also got involved with uh, Tarshimkova. 
and they put together the information system for all the labs so that we can exchange information and complain and find solutions. I'd like to thank him. The Department of Natural Sciences, Bujavitsa, then the Microbiological Institute in Trzeba, and then Dr. Shaha, and many, many others, many labs <coughs> which uh, just uh, don't fit here, but over 250 qualified experts, and very often they worked in three shifts. Uh, and during several days or weeks, uh, they have prepared diagnostic units, uh, which uh, could, uh, in fact, uh, in the labs, uh, work uh, full time. <coughs> we progress tens of thousands of samples. Uh, <coughs> I think this is great success. I don't know about uh, you, but I'll tell my grandchildren that I was there. As I said, we were a bit naive at first, but then we came across reality, the one of face masks, protective equipment, collection uh, vessels, or this wob, some were brought from China, and some were turned out to be rectal swabs. So that's not ideal, really. And uh, uh, there was no electronization of request forms, registration, uh, processing, circulation of samples. Uh, and <coughs> Marianne will speak about his uh, excellent team, and together with the Czech Army, they have handled it. But there were no rea reagents, kits, primers, nucleotides. Uh, when you buy a kit from China or Korea, you get it uh, normally, and uh, no one cares. Everything is automated. That's the usual business. Uh, and suddenly, we didn't have these things. So we decided an institute to solve the bottleneck, and that was the isolation of the RNA. And we could, uh, we then, because we didn't have the chemicals, uh, so Pavel Shacha and his colleagues used magnetic uh, walls that we got from uh, another infrastructure, the regional uh, center of new technologies in Alamos and by Radex Bochel. So we got these balls, these beads, uh, magnetic beads, uh, and uh, the again the double helix or transcripted. Uh, oh, in fact, the RNA uh, uh, sits on these beads. Everything else is washed uh, off. Then you have only the nucleic acid. Uh, Later, you also wash it off, uh, rinse it, and the PCR reaction, which you know so well, which you could handle yourself, starts. So it is quite simple, but you have to work out the method so that it can be done anywhere, Trzebon, Lisanad Labem, anywhere, so that it works a million times uh, without any error. This uh, uh, we have succeeded, and the modification, the method again was uh, uh, developed by Marian Haidu and the uh, dinner company, which is also present here. And didn't have the beads from all modes, but they they made their own beads. So this method uh, has been worked out in several sites. And uh, now, thanks to IOCB Tech, IOCB Tech, in fact, uh, donated 10,000 isolation kits to the National Health Institute uh, in Ostrava, where there was a recent outbreak. We have our colleagues, Laskova, uh, Shulcova, and others. So much about testing. As uh, the uh, 
speakers before me uh, have said, I'm so glad uh, we could make it. And it was great how we could mobilize all our scientific forces. But let me say, this is not just testing. Uh, so, but I can relax. There will be publications. Don't worry. Uh, I know about excellent uh, research in Alamouts, again, Marianne Haidu. Uh, and there are other institutions like uh, UOCHB, uh, Masaryk University, medical departments of our university, alternative methods of testing. PCR is great, but if you could do it from saliva, it would be much easier. There is a method that has been perfected. It's not sensitive enough which could do the identification not in six hours, uh, but within 30 minutes. So we are also collaborating with the Biotechnology Institute. <coughs> and we can now test antibodies at our institute. And many laboratories are creating efficient inhibitors and viral replications or also in the Parasitological Institute. There are other people who are also working on a, a vaccine, but in international collaboration. An example how we can succeed, the main enzyme, the RNA-dependent polymerase, and you can see it quite beautifully. You can see the cavity where the substrate is bound and the RNA is really <coughs> the uh, substrate when another molecule which looks like a nucleotide is added. You can see it has some structural characteristics that prevents the chain from growing. Polymerase stops. And that's, uh, in fact, medication against RNA. Again, uh, so this, uh, uh, in fact, was what a student of Dr. Holly did. He decided to carry on with his career in California. He's now president of Gilead Sciences. And this is Remdesivir, which at this moment is one of two authorized drugs for emergency use. It's used in Asia, USA, and Europe. We also have Remdesivir to, in fact, cope with coronavirus. It's an inhibitor of the polymerase. <coughs> uh, it slows down replication, so it shortens hospital stay. And we can hope it will save human lives. <coughs> so, my uh, uh, again for Petr Dvořák, our colleagues handled the structure of a protein, Radimnitska, for example, and this is uh, an enzyme which is blocked, uh, and the virus cannot replicate. So, a, a success. So, to conclude, I have also called a subtitle for my presentation, What We Have Learned. President uh, Vosak and the ministers have said that thanks to the infrastructure, we can now mobilize our R&D capacities. It's a pleasure to see how people can improvise and work really fast. It's fascinating that barriers are broken in a crisis. Uh, well, the very small barriers between the Academy of Sciences and uh, universities are gone, and also barriers between industry and science. In the afternoon, there'll be a presentation by Dr. Sedlacek. He will speak about the reagents uh, and how 
fast uh, some products were made. That was unthinkable before. We have great scientists and students who are ready and capable to really put in their time uh, to, to work as volunteers for a good cause. Now, the army, well, I, know, uh, I must say the army of the Czech Republic is really professionally, there are many uh, amazing professionals and it's good to have them. We can do almost anything. So, let me thank, uh, yes, to the donors, uh, private sponsors, um, they helped uh, a lot. So, oh, so IOCB Tech gave five million. So, uh, the Experientia Foundation, Mr. Sistvosak, one million crowns to support uh, the center of Dr. Haidu and IDEA at Serge EI. You will hear more about uh, them and the Volvo company let us have five cars, uh, they loan them to distribute samples, uh, dozens of people brought pizza, uh, baked cakes, made masks, and so on. The atmosphere was like in 1989 in autumn. So you can see Biosev, I could show you 10 pictures from other institutes. Um, that was the farewell party of Biosev. And these are the people who participated in uh, COVID testing, young optimistic faces, uh, great hands, very skillful. That's the future, not only of our country. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Konvalenka, for both the presentation and for what you have done at uh, the climax of the crisis. Uh, difficult situation bring people together. Also, thank you for the PCR. That uh, was of major interest uh, to me. Now I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Hajduk, Director of Institute of Molecular and Translational Medicine, Palatsky University, Olomouc, and also research uh, uh, in infrastructure, airtress, and uh, the uh, laboratory of Ministry of uh, for testing of uh, well, airtress, Eric. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to share experience that I gained during the difficult period. Perhaps uh, if I were to do that again, I would think twice. But it's um, experience or lesson learned for your whole life. And it's also an opportunity. Crisis is not only a problem, but an opportunity too. Well, now I'd like to talk about the infrastructure that I'm at the head of European Advanced Translation Infrastructure in Medicine, which is a part and parcel of uh, ERIC, uh, that is European uh, uh, Innovation Consortium. Well, we have got involved in testing, we shared and joined large uh, research infrastructure in the fight against pandemic. I would also like to talk about the development of diagnostic tools and I'll present or introduce some other research infrastructures that will speak in the afternoon. So we just wanted to, I just want to highlight that we are up and running and to do act as a complex as a set. What is it like such an infrastructure? Well, it's a trade that uh, uh, is composed of individual um, research infrastructures, individual scientists or researchers, and it runs on uh, 
buildings or structures, in this case it is the train, is organized in the form of platforms like small molecules in case of uh, uh, TRIS, MPMPs, uh, imaging, biomarkers, vaccines, uh, and all those five uh, platforms actually get involved in uh, trying to grapple with uh, the COVID-19 associated crisis. Now, uh, it is financed, uh, I, I mean, it's uh, in, uh, by individual member states, and the train is uh, led by Board of International or National Directors with respect to research and coordination office, which is uh, in Amsterdam. What is uh, the objective to translate uh, uh, scientific discoveries into medical practice or products, so we are very close to application, or um, at least in the field of uh, biomedicine. I will not go to details because I don't have uh, much time. The individual products like biomarkers, vaccines, etc., etc., since this is highly regulated, uh, have to meet many um, requirements, like in case of drugs, there has to be well, first, uh, I mean, clinical trials, um, first target selection candidate, phase zero, one, two, etc. And uh, then it goes up to the proof of concept, that is discovery phase, exploratory proof of concept, confirmatory phase. And all that is uh, done by Green and uh, the commercial by pharmaceutical companies. Tris, Tris has um, 10 uh, institutes involved or establishments. And uh, we are in charge of uh, uh, the um, um, coordination. I'm very happy we have uh, uh, former Minister um, Kopitsova who actually signed the contract. Uh, that was uh, the 1st of April, uh, April uh, 2010, but it was uh, not the full day. Uh, uh, we were granted the funds for the project. The investment, obviously, both that uh, part from European Union as well as co financing from the national budget was more than uh, efficient and effective. So, cost effective coronavirus is a good example example of uh, the successful results and that it had simply paid off. Uh, Mr. Konvalinka already said that uh, the first laboratory that was approved for testing, since we had all the certificates necessary, now certified uh, workplace together with Olomos Hospital, we are a high capacity uh, place, since we are one of the open screen, had now led by Mr. Bartuniak in the Czech Republic, this high capacity methods, high performing methods, we used for testing small molecules. Uh, we had diagnostics, um, everything. So we launched the tests um, pretty soon, and we have still been testing, and perhaps uh, never will put an end to that. So uh, this uh, wrap up part to your welfare uh, party, uh, and with them, I don't think we'll ever have that. What were the challenges we had to do? Information tool, IT tool for academic. Uh, facilities we needed establishments they had nothing they could use uh, to control or rather manage this uh, we do data stewardship in medicine that means collection data mining storing etc and in order to be able to analyze data to have uh, continuous um, access to it, we had to prepare a number or develop a number of uh, platforms. Clean data, clean 
nuclear preclinical data from animal models and preclinical testing. All that is um, digitized. Uh, there is an open access there too, so it can be used without any obstacle motivation. Um, well, once we had the system ready to collect clinical data, and we knew the laboratory systems um, do not uh, cannot simply cope with this uh, COVID data. Therefore, we decided to uh, simply adjust clean data portal and to um, create the so-called COF-IT system. What made us do it? Because to begin with, we got all the uh, samples with request form uh, in a paper form. Uh, you have uh, this request form, which affects um, the uh, vessel then we in the best case we had the birth uh, uh, day number we could forget all the wrappings or whatever it was uh, brought in in pale buckets literally said which was impossible to work with so we could not do that we had to uh, I mean, develop scanners and scan it all those papers that we had to enter it into laboratory ID or hospital ID and just imagine that even if it takes 10 minutes to uh, digitize one request uh, in a paper form it means 83 hours a day if you had 500 samples or specimen a day so obviously there was no way to, to do it that uh, way um, therefore, we um, had a central system uh, that was actually then run by uh, the RPHA, COVID application forms done by um, Czech Army and military simply and tested people had to receive the results uh, through SMS. Um, if you test 10,000 persons a day, and um, when the epidemic uh, climaxed, it was almost 10,000 people tested a day. So you couldn't call 10,000 people. 95% of the results were negative. To call them and tell them while you are negative, it would be a waste of time. So. We developed this uh, system of sending the negative results through SMS, and those couple of a few positive cases, of course, uh, by people whom we called and informed. Now we still have the issuance of free from infection certificate uh, that is um, in the form of an electronic um, doc. So I I don't think we should go through all the data. Uh, it doesn't make sense. But um, apart from what I've already said, you can send automatically the results. Uh, you send it to ISIN database, to UZIS. Uh, you send uh, SMSs on an hourly basis. You send the data and to the central management system of the um, smart quarantine and uh, also basic statistics are uh, collected uh, it's uh, very functional very helpful simply it does work as an independent uh, system and a laboratory system and it's also some sort of add-on to the existing uh, laboratory system and if uh, someone doesn't have it they can I mean, uh, get it, of course. Now, clean, uh, clean data. The, uh, there we have 25,000 individuals already um, in this um, clinical data stewardship. 
and we also used it in other studies uh, that uh, we uh, did. Uh, more than 22,000 examinations were processed data wise, and it will be uh, used uh, in the future as well for free. We offer that to any workplace who is interested. Uh, through this address uh, that uh, sees that uh, open access to RI. Now, uh, we have uh, involved in Preval, a uh, Preval study on the immune rate uh, uh, in the Czech Republic. You have heard of it. That was an epidemiological study or uh, evaluation across several cohorts. We did Venus um, blood uh, tests and um, we took uh, 9,000 uh, plus, uh, 9,324 persons. We took uh, blood tests uh, um, of in a week in the Czech Republic. We tested 26,000. Uh, 211 of whom 900 and uh, plus in Olomouc region. I guess uh, I shall never be involved in any large uh, uh, study or trial. I, I would like to thank everyone who got involved. Um, I'm not talk about. Uh, I mean, I'm not uh, gonna talk about the immune rate uh, in any further detail. Details, why have people got uh, involved or why were they included in the study or trial? Uh, there was a demand expressed across uh, the regions, not only in Prague, those 10,000 vacancies or vacant places were sold in a way, we, I mean, in a couple of hours. Um, so there was an immense interest or demand for being included in the sense and that is important obviously our general public supports science uh, many most people said they wanted to contribute to knowledge uh, on, on new findings on COVID-19 obviously the general public is ready and willing to participate in the well-designed uh, activities. And it's obvious also in mapping the Czech genome, which we do with Charles Pospisio and other, in other areas where um, persons or general public shows major interest in uh, engaging. What were the conclusions? Well, I learned uh, that this is feasible, can be done in the Czech Republic, and I guess we can be far more ambitious in um, cooperating with different cohorts, and we can uh, get involved in such uh, trials or evaluations. We also uh, address this isolation or extraction system. I'm not going to go into details. We have fully automated uh, system validated uh, on uh, roughly 5,000 patient samples. PCMAN, the evaluation of this method, which is now done and ready, as a matter of fact, uh, it's, uh, we are better off uh, than uh, the standard used, and um, we were subject to external quality to uh, control the kit uh, fully successful, so we are just as uh, successful or at the same high level as any other laboratories in the world. In this country, we have great devices, diagnostic devices or equipment, but if uh, an XYZ company tells you, well, we need the chemistry for or chemical testing for our uh, purposes in 
Germany and we shall not uh, simply export it, take it out of the country, then uh, it's good for nothing. Now the strength uh, uh, has been proven of the open access, uh, open systems. It is irreplaceable in crisis situations uh, where we were since the automatic systems on the one hand you put a vial on one hand and at the uh, other hand you get the results but all these devices uh, stood still because they were not used. So the whole process was running for two months and we succeeded in developing a method. We licensed it in our spin-off of the Alamos University and we uh, also got a certification. So this is a certified <laughs> Uh, product and it's uh, made into several uh, types uh, of packaging. It can be used uh, routinely. It has been tested in several laboratories in an open system, which is great. So during a couple of months, if we can do this, usually the licensing uh, contract uh, takes about six months or more and the certification authorities take a long time to answer you so this for me is really a great lesson uh, let uh, me introduce some other infrastructures i only have three minutes left uh, uh, it will be more than three minutes. Uh, so there is infrastructure for biobanking, and all uh, the m materials are in the biobank. This is very, very uh, valuable. There is Professor Valik who also participated in the validation of rapid test in the preval system. And antibodies are also studied. So uh, you can see the immunity rate. And these are not only Dr. Valik's data, but worldwide. So the process of immunization is not the way to go, as we know. And then uh, the quality and the preval system. Infrastruction for clinical testing, it's Dr. Demlova is in charge, and infrastructure for evaluating uh, for clinical evaluation, and they have done several clinical studies which are now underway. Our patients are an innovative treatment or treatment that is comparable. They can uh, have remdesivir, leconavir, interferon, hydroxychloroquine, and others. This is very important. Thanks to the infrastructures, uh, people have a chance uh, to cure uh, the infrastructure system. There's, uh, again, Dr. Bartuniak, who is involved. First, it was called an information system. Then it developed uh, the information system called Corona Base. They have done over 7,000 tests. Here you can see all the academic labs and the number of tests. And I think we are still the biggest site. And then the Institute of Molecular Genetics, the Czech infrastructure. Derek, it deals with the analysis of protein structures. If we know these structures, I forgot to mention Dr. Sklenar. So we can then rationally design drugs, medical drugs. Uh, if we know there is the kind of pocket uh, where remdesivir fits in, if you don't know what the pocket looks like, uh, cannot design it. If you don't know what the, a lock looks like, you cannot design a key. This is really important. And uh, our colleagues uh, 
uh, studied this, and as Dr. Korvalinka mentioned, there is a super prestigious publication, <coughs> communications. It's a matter of three months, so that was really fast. <coughs> Check bioimaging from one of the national hubs. Uh, then it studies uh, viruses uh, also in animal models. This has been used uh, clinically. The presence of coronavirus in uh, secretions of patients. Uh, uh, and uh, we try to test if they are infectious or not. Again, animal models, uh, Dr. Sedlar, Czech, <coughs> the Czech Center for Phenogenomics, the mouse clinic. We don't have good uh, animal models for this uh, infection. Uh, the uh, mouse uh, receptor <coughs> is not really so good, uh, so the, we are now working on better models to study this uh, infection and gene modification. For example, by inhaling the virus, uh, the epithelial cells are transduced and over uh, the human receptor is overexpressed and then the mouse becomes, uh, in effect, susceptible to the virus. In the future, we need an animal facility, maybe level 2, 3, or 4. There is such a facility in the Czech Republic. Many companies <coughs> ask for collaboration. <coughs> We don't have the capacity to work with all of them. There is a company called Dintec for veterinary vaccines, including coronavirus. So uh, it's not for the human vaccine, but there are many coronavirus diseases in animals, very relevant, like bovine coronavirus. Uh, the calves have a kind of cold, but an old cow uh, can um, die. So it's a simulation situation that imitates the situation in human medicine. It was not meant pejoratively speaking about an old cow, but great assistance came from infrastructures, from Infra CZ and Elixir. They offer supercomputers and uh, networks. Also, uh, we uh, were helped in the infrastructure. An infrastructure was uh, built by them for our servers and everything we needed urgently to improve our uh, capacity and connectivity. Our colleagues are also involved in many European initiatives um, for modeling the virus, uh, measuring the effect of drugs. And last but not least, we have the social <coughs> scientific infrastructures, several projects. Uh, like um, share. One of them is called transformation of the Czech society. The infection spread differently in Italy and here, also thanks to our social conventions. There are many hidden or latent things we should pay attention to. So, a long-term household survey <laughs> has been used, uh, and some modifications in household behavior. All that has affected the uh, dissemination of the virus. Uh, and we think even the participation in screening preventive programs is conditioned by convention, social status, uh, and other factors, which technically we can have super screening programs for cancer, but 
If people don't turn up for the screening, it's no good. Conclusions. Uh, you can see research infrastructures and institutions. <laughs> they have flexibly responded to uh, the uh, solution of the crisis. They have turned out to be very flexible and adaptive. Commercial applications are already here. There will be more of them. There was also a hackathon. <laughs> Uh, I haven't mentioned the outcomes, but many of the outputs uh, in collaboration with academic sites are really exceptional. A very a rapid response of various uh, institutions and the government. The government is often criticized for how it handled the crisis. <laughs> But uh, I know it's difficult to please the Czech population. We are always dissatisfied, and maybe that's why we are successful. Because if you are not satisfied, you are driven uh, to achieve something. But I think the government has handled it well, grant agencies have adapted, they opened new calls. And in many countries, they can only dream about it. We had a teleconference with about 80 institutions across Europe, Italy, Spain, Sweden, much a different uh, institution. So we should be really grateful. The matter is how it will be handled in the future. Research. Uh, structures have uh, happen, have uh, become part of the infrastructure, so the Crisis Act uh, does not have to be modified. Realistically, it has turned out <coughs> that all these structures work. Uh, new strategies of COVID testing are being drafted. The importance of laboratories is described in uh, uh, this new uh, draft. <laughs> I hope we'll collaborate with colleagues uh, uh, in testing or in coping with other threats for public health. <laughs> and I want to thank the huge team of people who have participated, also research infrastructures, ministries, agencies, <laughs> They have been extremely welcoming, and I hope that the speed and welcoming spirit will stay with us. Well, thank you, sir, for a comprehensive summary research infrastructures and their contribution to pandemics uh, management. Now, we have uh, uh, we are slightly delayed. Therefore, now there should be press conference with ministers and research stakeholders. It shall start at 12. Those of you who are to be at the press conference should proceed to the lobby where journalists will take care of them. And the second comment, a site visit to CZ Open Screen Research Infrastructure will be postponed until after the end of the second block. And now I'd like to ask Mr. Hosha to take the floor, Chair of the European Strategy Forum on Research Infrastructures, who is uh, going to talk about RIs uh, and their further as a part of the critical infrastructure of the state and their future, so to say, um, role in the situation of crisis and emergency. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to have you here and be able to address you as a chair of uh, ASFRI. 
and also to show that the activities at the European level are extremely relevant for the situation of the Czech Republic as well. I'm happy I did prepare, or I had prepared the presentation before, and had I not done that, it would uh, seem that I'm just, uh, you know, repeating what had already been said. But that means that uh, the Czech um, research infrastructures and research community is up to the mark or up to European standards. And I dare say that as to arise, uh, Czech uh, Republic belongs uh, to the sort of uh, um, uh, good uh, practice. So, we are some sort of pioneers in the uh, exploitation of ASIF for funding the research infrastructure, the renewal, sustainability, etc., our strategic planning with respect to large um, RIs and uh, that in relation to other structural policies, just like their funding or financing is extremely progressive if you compare it uh, against other European countries. Well, uh, research infrastructures have been actively involved uh, in the fight uh, against the uh, COVID, uh, but not only at the national, but uh, European level as well. I'll be short, perhaps even shorter than I had intended. Uh, since we heard a lot from Mr. Haiduk already, I'll simply share with you the European perspective. By way of introduction, let me say, and I simply decided to use as the title uh, the motto of our today's conference, but since I am convinced that the research infrastructures are uh, a part of uh, the critical infrastructure of the state. Well, now um, briefly refresh your memories to ask for it. S3 is uh, the European Strategy Forum on our eyes. It is not a part and parcel of European Commission. It is not a program committee of Horizon or any other European programs. S3 simply is a platform. A platform forum where delegates uh, representing the individual member states of the EU associated countries and the Commission share or exchange opinion, uh, uh, lead strategic debates, issue opinions to crucial issues of uh, pan European significance and also to a certain degree uh, share in. Uh, developing or growing up national policies. ESFRE is a unique, so to say, forum, uh, since it uh, is a combination of the administrative um, perception of policy making with uh, scientific expertise. And uh, we have a strategy strategic groups to support us in the activities. Many of you are participating in these uh, teams or task forces. And these make sure that the policy making or the, the policy related debates are really um, supported by knowledge. More than 300 experts uh, are involved in ESFRI deliberations and uh, the 
uh, recommendations we issue, I believe, are highly relevant. Ever since 2006, S3 has been uh, publishing or issuing the roadmap to um, research uh, infrastructures. And this is the role that we have always uh, been fully devoted to. So even though we do not have a budget, or S3 doesn't have a budget of its own, and yet more than 20 billion euro from national sources um, was spent uh, to support the building of uh, our eyes, and also indirectly we mm, simply sub support operating costs uh, in the amount of 1.5 billion um, euro annually. S3, I mean, does its uh, best to support um, uh, the functioning and interlinked ecosystem of research infrastructure capable to support um, um, the uh, efforts to identify um, the science-based solutions of societal challenges. And um, we have already heard how relevant it is. So we should certainly continue with these activities as free is a unique, as I've said, uh, body, uh, since there is uh, this policy making, administrative expertise, scientific expertise, and all together, we can provide the European scientists and researchers with the best conditions, background, and infrastructure for top quality, fundamental or applied um, research. One, but not the only so, uh, output is uh, the ro other roadmaps on research infrastructures. But it is important to say that as free offers its uh, policy-making know-how, scientific expertise uh, to the ministers, to those ministers who wish to receive it or to any member state that uh, invites that either upon their initiative or its own initiative. We have um, compiled several manuals or publications or handbooks simply on a number of things like innovation, potential of uh, research infrastructures, solutions and recommendations to guarantee sustainability of our eyes or reports on e-infrastructures, etc. In uh, the last year, we have um, exerted very um, intensive efforts to make uh, up or to draw up uh, the booklet, Making Science Happen, in uh, which is uh, aimed at uh, our eyes uh, functioning in Europe. And that's a summary of one year's debate on the role of uh, research infrastructures, not only for the renewal of European research era, ERA, but also for the benefit of national strategies. We do present arguments proving the significance of our eyes for the uh, other policies um, besides uh, policy governing research. And in the Czech Republic, that is uh, significant. We got to understand that sooner than uh, some other European countries. Uh, the so-called sectoral platforms is a good example. These help the Ministry of Education and Sports to conceive or rather to draw up 
up uh, the respective policies in broader context. This is a summary, nothing new, no uh, rediscovering of America, but um, we led uh, numerous discussions uh, within S3, and most of the things covered here have already been talked upon. RI, which do constitute one of the basic pillars of ERA, European Research um, Era, and to provide uh, science and research with services, or top sciences. RI is also uh, are not merely investments uh, in production, these are strategic investments across sectoral policies, which fully support uh, both the national and European economics. Now, RI, so I mean both European and na national, do profit from synergies of European national and regional priorities and do play a major role in improving life in several areas, not only better quality health care, but uh, climate uh, change related issues, drought, floods, energy. Uh, and also energy security, transport, migration, health, etc. Now, to go back to the title of my presentation, I dare say that functioning ecosystem of advice is the best answer to, or perhaps, solution of any potential crises or emergencies to come, and this has been clearly proven by COVID-19. The environment in which RIs cooperate uh, shows how important uh, is the data portability, robust data infrastructure development, including technological infrastructure background, because that's a must in order to become prepared and ready to deal with any or cope with any societal challenges. Now, this is a bit of an uh, political message uh, arise are uh, of major socio economic benefit, economic benefit, and benefit for the society in general. Unfortunately, though, there are not many studies right now proving the multiplication factors or multipliers of social impacts of arise on the general level. These are being uh, and uh, fine-tuning of this have not yet been fine-tuned, so we shall uh, have access to the uh, conclusion next year on the sun as a typical example of RI shows the direct economic um, effects of such a uh, infrastructure of more or less fundamental research are huge. And now, briefly, on S3 in the fight against COVID or in reaction to COVID. I shall cut it short because Mr. Hajduk already uh, had said uh, many of the things uh, in my presentation. S3, as well as the associated research infrastructures, have been heavily impacted by COVID-19, some had to change operations or plenary session, for instance, was cancelled and a conference was uh, actually not uh, carried out. That was under the Croatian um, presidency. We only had digital form 
uh, virtual conference. Also, the deadlines for proposals uh, as pre for as pre roadmap proposals was extended until uh, the um, 9th of September. And we witnessed in many cases an immediate uh, mobilization or activation of uh, researchers or research infrastructures. They immediately started offering services uh, for the um, fight against COVID-19 pandemic. As early well as at the beginning of March, we launched an information campaign that in updated people um, on the response of s Arise, on, its, uh, on their services and access to these services. It was very much in demand service that is, which is why in the mid of March um, we launched a dedicated web and in a couple of days we got more than uh, 80 uh, infrastructures actually offer their capacities um, in uh, the open source uh, mode. I'm going to skip that since we heard about the prompt response of individual research infrastructure, the um, anti-COVID programs, uh, diagnostic procedures, etc. Next three slides, and I'll merely touch upon that briefly. I wish to introduce you to several examples, including the dates, um, the speed of promptness of this. And this was done by random, so I apologize to all those who have not been picked. Uh, to be on these slides, I wish to thus uh, illustrate the activities uh, done by research infrastructures across uh, the individual research areas. Um, it involves both national and European research infrastructures in health and food. No wonder there was the fastest response. On 20th of March already, address Ekrin BBMRI, and we have already heard those um, abbreviations. Uh, the setting up of um, Alliance of Medical Research Infrastructures, and they have simply uh, provided open access to all their data sets or files. In a similar way, ERINA, which deals with uh, highly infectious diseases, free their capacities and know-how. Uh, whether in uh, the field of diagnostics or crisis management, uh, their protocols for preclinical vaccine testing, um, and thus so they also helped uh, uh, the effective uh, addressing of uh, COVID, then uh, humanities uh, and social sciences, uh, that means cultural and uh, social innovation infrastructures in that field. Um, 
conducted many studies, dedicated studies. These are being con this are continuing, and uh, thanks to that, we shall have a very abundant database uh, which will help us better understand the impacts of uh, crisis. In of COVID type and other research infrastructures also offered uh, their capacities, access to um, computing resources or data in uh, the field or in the fight against COVID. These were computing resources, uh, biobanks, disco, which uh, actually are collections of natural science uh, museums uh, offered access to one trillion of biological samples and enabled its, uh, I mean, availability. It simply enabled access and uh, exploration or studying of those in order to better understand uh, COVID lessons learned. Nothing. Um, almost um, ashamed to even read it. I, I hesitate to read it. I'm convinced that research infrastructures uh, are not only strategic uh, investments helping the competitiveness, uh, achieve competitive national and European economy, but it also uh, is recovered or pays back. Since it does um, broaden dynamics, flexibility of response to any type of a crisis whatsoever. I therefore summed up part of the recommendations uh, ensuing from debates within ESRI forum and also discussions or debates with our stakeholders during number of conferences, workshops, and exchange of written documents in order to manage or cope with any other future potential crisis uh, which certainly will occur, we have to support science, um, research institutes um, sufficiently. We also have to put up a platform or forum enabling multi-sectoral cooperation, knowledge sharing, uh, an integration of the whole system. Simply, we have to get uh, running or functioning an efficient and effective ecosystem, which will enhance or boost the readiness or rather preparedness to promptly respond. So, the links uh, between infrastructures uh, and e-infrastructures, EOSC, that is cloud, um, is um, essential as well. It's more than obvious. But we also should, should uh, fully utilize other disciplines, other science disciplines. We should set up a forum or platform facilitating communication with the society and to foresee, in a way, or anticipate the behavior and thus uh, prevent fake news. Also, we should um, establish a long-lasting bilateral relationships with the politicians or political sphere the over and above the policy making. Uh, well, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. 
Harusha for your paper, also for the emphasis put on the research infrastructures and also investments payoff and uh, the recommendations for the future. Now, since we are pretty late, I uh, will give you a chance to have one or two questions, after which we shall uh, postpone the agenda by one hour, perhaps. So uh, now questions, if you have questions, except I mean questions addressed to those who are here, not those who are at the press conference. Obviously, you prefer lunch to questions and also a site visit to CZ Open Screen RI. Well, thank you for attention. I wish to thank the uh, speakers as well, Dr. Hrushak and others. And let's meet here again at uh, quarter past one, 3.30. So have some refreshments and see.
nějaký zklamali ty před... Dobré odpoledne, vážené... Je vše tady, ale pozor. Ladies and gentlemen, hello again. I hope uh, you had a nice lunch break and you could also, those of you who are here and the Institute of Molecular Genetics could see the infrastructure. And now in the afternoon we'll speak about applications of research uh, institutions and first I'll ask the representatives of academicians. There is uh, Dr. Professor Zajimalova, who is the president of the Academy of Sciences. We have representatives of the Ministry of Education. Also, for example, the Deputy Minister for European Structural Funds. But first, I'll ask uh, um, Dr. Professor Zajimalova. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave out the uh, official address because I could forget some of you. So, dear colleagues, I think we have uh, already heard the essential things, to s so to save time, let me just point out uh, several items to follow up uh, Dr. Dvořák, who spoke about the positive aspects of the pandemic. Uh, so let me reiterate that all the activities of research institutions, not just the Academy of Sciences, all these activities came from the bottom up and they were spontaneous. So it was not the management of the institutions, it was individual scientific uh, specialists, molecular biologists and so on, who uh, then helped to get the certificate. Sometimes it took a long time to have a certificate for testing, but that's another story. It wasn't just testing that uh, uh, research institutions helped with. Uh, it was the most discussed uh, issue at the beginning, but some, Dr. Petracek will speak about it, was the development of new protective uh, personal equipment or new materials. Uh, so that was a huge impulse for R&D institutions to develop new materials uh, which uh, at various stages of the pandemic were necessary and probably will also be useful in the future. Then another impulse uh, that will stay for the future and that was uh, mentioned by Dr. Konvalinka and Professor Hajduk and others, and that uh, is the research of the virus. So, in addition to having a highly specialized lab <coughs> for a high degree of infection, you have to <coughs> have the virus to reproduce it and also, uh, in fact, <coughs> to grow it. So, it's not just the research of the virus mentioned by Professor Hajduk, the structure of the virus, its proteins and uh, RNAs, but it's also also means to study the speed of mutation, how long it uh, will stay in the human population, and there are even many uh, interesting evolutionary things that can come useful in the future because it's definitely not the last coronavirus uh, that. Uh, will have attacked us. And then some research methods uh, also named by Dr. Konvalenka and Professor Hajduk. We are not on first name terms, so I call him Professor Hajduk. This was a spontaneous development that was necessary. Uh, we heard about uh, isolation by magnetic beads. There are many other possibilities. There are antibodies of the patient which uh, can be tested or uh, very fast, or PCR. There is a third method. We are working on it together with the Taiwan Academy. 
Academy, uh, and it's a test uh, that, uh, that our physical institute, uh, there is a chip, and uh, mononuclear antibody can be bind to it, not of the patient, but against uh, a protein of the virus, as protein, the spike protein, which is on the tips uh, of the spikes of the virus. So it's now being tested, and I uh, can uh, say no more about it now, but it has the advantages of the methods. It detects the virus or the uh, RNA, and it's very fast because it's based on antibodies. And the chip, when you have the antibodies bound to it, it can be used uh, repeatedly for testing. So that means uh, uh, that uh, not it can be used not only for SARS-CoV-2, it can be also used for uh, Salmonella, for example. Uh, another thing which is being developed at the moment, which might be interesting for you, is the improvement uh, of uh, the uh, PCR testing method, but a method which can be calibrated and which is quantifiable. The present um, methods are not quantifiable. Uh, so you have the acid and then you detect it. Uh, the method developed, then the Biophysical Institute uh, can be calibrated. When you take samples, you can learn all about the dynamics. Uh, and Professor Hajduk will confirm it. In the samples, you have uh, different levels of RNA, and it does not only depend on the swab. So these are things uh, which uh, regard uh, the new trends uh, provoked really by the epidemic. I have also mentioned uh, collaboration and let me also stress <coughs> what I did at the press conference. The pandemic uh, has demonstrated what a complex matter this is. It's not just <coughs> medical. It affects the entire world and all the spheres of life, social contacts which affect the spread of the virus, uh, then of course economy, Dr. Uraida will speak about it, and uh, other things uh, such as some legal standards. Uh, our colleagues have prepared a kind of cookbook uh, for clinicians, if they had to choose, there are five respirators, but 10 people who need them. The key, how to choose them, that it's really fair and just, uh, and also to avoid legal problems uh, of a clinician. So it's a whole range of things. Uh, uh, there is an institute for uh, contemporary history at the academy, and during the state of emergency, they have been recording everything, who said what, various people in various social groups. So they are working on the oral history, uh, and they can come to interesting conclusions. Also, a, a philosopher said, <coughs> if you don't learn from your history, you are fated to, to repeat it. So, uh, social, uh, social sciences, humanities will play uh, an important role in our response in how we cope with the pandemic. Science means investing into near future and also distant future. The pandemic has shown that our country has a relatively developed scientific infrastructure. Now I don't mean specific infrastructures, but uh, uh, throughout the country. Dr. Konvalinka summed it up very nicely. 
This is of key inform importance so that the country can defend itself against viral or bacterial pandemic or it can be related to some disasters, a tsunami or a volcano eruption. So this scientific uh, infrastructure is of key importance and scientists do wish to fulfill its mission, as we could see. Scientists need uh, a few things, a stable environment which can uh, be uh, found or established only if there is the right ratio between institutional uh, funding and uh, funding for a specific purpose. So I don't know how it goes at uh, universities in the academy. The average is about 35% from institutional funding. That's too little. Institutions get some money for their work, but it's only short term projects. Uh, so people just uh, ask for grants and so on and so on. Uh, so uh, it, it's uh, in fact uh, uh, this is ratio and uh, it's important for the stability of the research infrastructure. So all of us, uh, we don't want us to do routine testing, routine work. But if a crisis occurs, then it's our duty to do things uh, as they should be done. And uh, maybe one last uh, thing. Uh, I'm doing this on behalf of the Academy, and it's all in goodwill. The Academy of Sciences uh, the only institution which, with the exception of clinical medicine, covers all disciplines. So we could uh, talk to each other, uh, advise each other, and so on. It has turned out uh, that uh, the borderline uh, between basic and applied research can be very thin, but this is not specific for the academy. And in the rhetoric of allocating finances, um, this may maybe slow down uh, research or m makes it more complicated because you have to uh, wonder, can I apply for this grant or not because I only do applied research. No, in fact, it's uh, a continuous process and many things from basic research uh, uh, just passed on to application very fast. Uh, Petr Dvořák is not here. I just had a um, tiny detail for him. I think uh, there are very good publications and there will be more of them. So it's not the goal to win by having 10 books on COVID. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for introducing uh, the whole portfolio of uh, research topics and also for emphasis put on uh, efficient and effective research, which subsequently can respond to all the challenges posed. Now, I'd like to ask Professor Malek, Vice President of the Czech Rectors Conference, to take the floor. Dear distinguished uh, president, dear colleagues, participants in this highly interesting conference. Well, 
by way of introduction i wish to say that under the title of research infrastructure as a part of the critical infrastructure of the state i uh, take it as all uh, everything simply we have at uh, disposal available for top quality research uh, i mean uh, regardless of the institutes of academy or apart from institutes of academy of sciences universities etc a rector's conference takes that this way. And in June, we stated that uh, Czech higher education or university education fulfills the task. And at the time of overcoming uh, the consequences of uh, coronavirus pandemic, this should become uh, top and foremost priority, which means supporting higher AGI, higher education institutions, and Czech science support the research, etc. All the presidents of Czech Senate um, agree or reached a consensus in that respect. A mix of uh, education and consistent cultivation and support of science is a must for the future generation of explorers or researchers, without whom no advanced society can do. It's in the uh, sense, oh, that's the substance of country for the future logo, which the government has often used, and Mr. Havlicek also articulated this uh, sort of a slogan or motto. We do appreciate the involvement and commitment of students, and also universities' background that was made available to all the activities associated with uh, tackling or trying to solve all national uh, issues. The list of activities is really long, and to give you a clear summary would um, not be possible because of the limited time I have. Therefore, I will leave it to the uh, presentations by experts later on. We also heard many interesting things from Mr. Konvalinka, my Marianne Haidu, and we'll hear ever more now. I wish to stress that not only um, her education institutions are um, I mean, placed in traditional, so to say, uh, venues, got involved, but all the HEIs, uh, some cases are well covered by media, some others are not. <laughs> Nevertheless, there is one thing they share in common, creativity, adaptability, and also simply readiness and willingness to help and cooperate whenever possible. From this point of view, we have to say that there is no border between different disciplines. A lot of attention is focused on testing, then uh, development of potential vaccine, smart quarantine project, and last but not least, technical sciences that uh, develop new materials as uh, to be used in filters, face masks, 3Ds, the longer ventilators, special face shields, productive clothes, and sanitizers or solutions to be used by sanitizers. I'm sure that all that will be covered by Mr. Petracek, Czech Technical University Rector, and societal sciences are of the same importance. It is essential to be able to cope with um, economic crises. Uh, we have to prevent the uh, losses of jobs, prevent people getting into debt traps. And uh, the uh, of utmost importance is, um, I mean, that our economy picks up again, Professor Oh, one of the speakers will suddenly talk about that. Now, uh, impact on pandemic in the world. In the Nature Journal, uh, there were references to empty auditoriums and issues associated with distance education. 
that will in the long run result in a drop in foreign students studying here, which again may have a negative impact on the available resources of funds for education. Look at the US. Uh, the pro President Trump's uh, statements, etc., and it does have an impact on us as well. Uh, positive or a, an advantage is that perhaps universities will be better perceived and will be seen as significant institutions for the society thanks to their activities in the fight against pandemics, COVID-19 and pandemics. And it also has to do with international mobility. Science is an international exercise. And if uh, we have drop in the demand of uh, students uh, wanting to study at HEI is bad enough. So let us prevent further outflow or decrease in uh, foreign students and potential researchers. You can't replace education. I mean, a regular uh, day of full studies, you can't replace it by remote or home-based studies, and the same applies for work and research. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor, for touching up on new aspects about mobility. We have not talked as yet, um, and it is very important, especially for implementation of the quality research and pandemic impacts on mobility. International mobility are more than obvious now already. And I will ask uh, uh, Dr. Welchowski, um, Deputy Minister for EU and European Structural Investment Funds, Minister of Education, Youth and Sports. Uh, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, this is in English. We hope you can hear the speaker. He said a few things in English, but I'm going to speak in Czech, but my presentation is in English. Uh, that is, the slides are in English. Let me focus on some areas we have not heard about yet, and these are some economic aspects. I have a few slides showing um, the development over the last 10 years, funding of R&D. You can see the overall structure of funding. You can see very sharp growth of private resources, but I am also pleased that even the national government sources are growing. And the pink curve, that is uh, European Structural Investment Funds. Uh, we are moving in waves, so it's logical that the biggest expenditures are usually reached in the third third uh, of expenditure. That is why the peak in uh, 12, 2012, 14, 16 is different. And then you have a new peak. Structural funds uh, have helped to influence the structure of R&D in the Czech Republic. Of course, we can uh, put the bureaucratic burden in doubt, but uh, uh, it has helped many institutions to find a new raison d'etre, a new direction. When we look at the so-called additionality, the added value, we can see that in addition to incentives, it is research mainly that uh, has been influenced and formed over the last 10 years by structural funds. Also, universities, uh, when we look at uh, uh, R&D expenditures, 
again over the last 10 years we can see more than a double uh, rise in absolute uh, numbers but we can also see the light blue showing the additional resources coming from European structure and investment funds. This is also a central, non-negligible factor. As you know, for Vivape, we created all these centers and some centers of excellence and new research centers. The projects uh, have then ended in 2015. Uh, they are still sustained. The National Program of Sustainability is also still running. And I am very happy that many of them have uh, managed to defend their positions. And also these sites uh, will still continue, or there will be a continuation of their work in the future. These sites also influence the research ecosystems. The intervention from OPNAPI has made of OPI innovation uh, has also succeeded in increasing funding for R and D. So you can see the FDE jobs for researchers. Prague is not really here. Prague is a highly developed region, uh, of course, is of importance. Here are some other uh, graphs or charts, so you can see how the outputs of research have improved. There are published articles, the blue line, patents, the purple one, or uh, industrial and utility designs. So you can see the, the added value for institutions if they are careers of infrastructure, finance of, from European uh, funds, then the Horizon 2020. Uh, in, uh, in fact, uh, framework programs, the success rate of those who have used European funds uh, is almost four times uh, bigger. It may not be causality or correlation, but uh, it is a phenomenon that can be observed. In uh, the current program period coming to an end uh, now, then in R&D, we have supported uh, over 500 projects uh, without building new centers of excellence. But we focus on uh, development, uh, on uh, excellent work, and also human resources and the support of large uh, infrastructures. Uh, the president has also mentioned mobility. And I am happy that we could also, uh, we could also help with R&D, OB R&DI. As you can see the figures, uh, all the numbers of persons, and you can see the mobilities as they are uh, divided into countries. Germany ranks first, uh, then the United States, and Austria, and Great Britain. So, of course, Brexit, we are sure, may uh, 
affect incoming and outgoing mobility. Uh, I would also like uh, to give some thanks. Uh, the European projects uh, have helped in combating coronavirus and also uh, other speakers will mention it as uh, Rika Ipsaitek, uh, also uh, the Czech Agriculture University. They've all helped and testing and testing capacities, Biosev, uh, the Pelatsky University in Almacetek again, or supercomputer IT for innovations. They have also helped, um, also indirectly perhaps. So I'd like to thank all those uh, institutions. They have shown they can use their background, also thanks to European funds. And the European Commission has facilitated to use these capacities to combat coronavirus. European funds uh, uh, have very strict rules, so this uh, was not something you can take for granted. Uh, now, how to conclude my presentation? We have already heard that uh, a highly developed uh, infrastructure is the basis. The Ministry of Education must assure in the future program period to support uh, to support the infrastructure. Uh, the impact may be different than in, uh, in applied research as for basic research, but still it's um, standard, flexible. What we have built from uh, Czech or European money will help us to face future threats uh, we may not avoid. Without the infrastructure, the situation might be much worse. The pandemic has shown that funding of research makes sense, and I hope that will also convince the European Commission about its importance to assure a stable funding of big research infrastructures. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to thank you, Mr. Deputy Minister, for stressing the importance of European structural investment funds for research capacities in the Czech Republic. In the years 27, 8, when the first centers were established, who would have said that this investment will really return so that these centers and infrastructures will have been now very involved uh, in uh, coping with the crisis, with the pandemic. I would like to thank the entire panel and now we'll uh, focus on specific applications. First, the president of the Czech Technical University, Dr. Petracek. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, teachers, many Many universities have also produced sanitizers, or manufactured sanitizers, and also artificial intelligence was applied to improve security or smart quarantine. What is also very important is the fact that during the crisis, uh, there was uh, uh, excellent uh, collaboration uh, among universities. It's not so common to set up such good relations uh, and also very intense cooperation of universities and uh, businesses, companies. 
which uh, in fact, together with universities and other institutions and the Academy of Sciences, at the beginning of the crisis, self-organized so uh, they really got together very fast, as fast as they could. We should stress uh, that this self-organization in our society happened, and I regard it as uh, an important aspect uh, of what we have gone through. This very fast development of ideas, uh, which uh, in uh, universities are part of uh, university activities, and but they, these ideas suddenly had to be transformed and uh, really put to use. So that's something we should remember for the future. And I am sure that it's something uh, to remember. At the beginning of the crisis, uh, it was also important to establish a system of fast uh, funding, which depended on the sources of universities, companies, and the public uh, also organized many collections. This money was available almost immediately. Uh, that is fast money that enabled this fast uh, response was followed uh, by the government and uh, of course state institutions uh, are a bit slower and because they have to use uh, uh, the competition principle. Uh, all this knowledge is important for possible future crises. The entire research structure, uh, the knowledge of natural sciences uh, uh, at universities, uh, uh, was available at the time when it was needed. Uh, but, well, I mean, that was the entire, entire knowledge, not just the knowledge regarding something unpredictable. We cannot expect uh, what uh, exact uh, part of knowledge will need in the future to be able to respond. So, from uh, this unusual angle, we then uh, got something we uh, needed. For example, the work of Dr. Stimal who collaborated with us. Uh, he specializes uh, in nano aerosols, uh, a topic which was on the margin, but still this has saved uh, many lives, not just here, but it was an information that helped to to improve uh, face mask, and it has helped to save lives, so we can never know which part of applied research can uh, help. So that's why it's necessary to promote the entire uh, base. Another thing that was uh, on the back burner, uh, it's Professor Robig and the history of 25 years of developing special, although not frequently used, lung ventilation methods, and they could suddenly be used. So that's why a lung ventilator could be manufactured very quickly. I just want to give it as an example that we should have 
a large knowledge base developing in all directions. As the President Zimalva said, the Academy covers almost all uh, uh, disciplines. And that is, uh, so that is what we have gone through. Now we are uh, at a point or in a situation when the epidemic seems to be under control. There are many experts who know that this is a very fragile balance. But, uh, well, this is the summer. People have a stronger immunity or the manifestations of the disease are not so prominent, but elsewhere in the world the situation is much worse. And uh, only such a simple thing like wearing masks, uh, something that uh, we managed to come with uh, and to promote. Uh, in other countries, it was quite a big battle. Even the WHO was against it first. But our idea uh, was good, and WHO has admitted that wearing masks uh, helps. Uh, unfortunately, they admitted this too late. Uh, so it costs some human lives. Uh, uh, let me say that this is an idea coming from the Czech Republic, if you want to say how have we contributed to what's going on in the world. So face masks come from the Czech Republic, Czechia. Now we want to take a rest. The public wants to have some rest, not not experts. And just people want to relax um, and maybe forget about masks and uh, see each other. But the question is, what's ahead of us? I'm certain there'll be another round uh, of uh, this uh, game with the virus. As Dr. Konvalinka said, the virus is so smart. But uh, I think the virus is only one of the things uh, that will bother us. Uh, there is a also the psychological impact, uh, social impact, uh, rising poverty, also some parts of the world in shortage of food. These will be uh, bigger, um, bigger impacts than the disease itself. Uh, that is why uh, it will mean looking for new solutions, uh, how to help people, how to help economy, or work with data. The issue of data explosion regarding the epidemic and correlations and what's happening in the process, uh, there is a lot of it, and uh, not to be confused or misled by false correlations. Uh, this is a very complicated task uh, in terms of data. So, from the technical platform, we expect new ideas and also completing the existing solutions which are being planned, which are now organized, but everything that's within the potential of technical universities should be also included in crisis plans 
of uh, the government or governments uh, of the world so that we use, uh, can use the structure that is available and uh, also obey some rules. It does not concern only a medical catastrophe, but also cyber security or other, other crises, cyber attacks. In this respect, I would like to confirm what we have heard today for me and other university presidents. Universities are part of the critical infrastructure of the state. And I am sure that the, it has been confirmed that the autonomous response of skilled experts has helped that we could really get up, face the crisis, and this can be even generalized for future possible crisis. Uh, how does uh, the role of technical universities in society change? The, in the last uh, months, we could see that research knowledge is a strategic material but uh, we have to be able to develop our know-how and we have to have it in the first place uh, to cope with a problem that can arise. And I'm sure that we'll no longer hear that uh, financing universities is a black hole. Knowledge must be accumulated, saved, and for universities and also the Academy of Sciences, uh, we know that uh, universities are the places where it happens. So we should not forget uh, what is marginal either. Funding research and gathering know-how is similar on the informational level as uh, when we acquire ammunition. Without ammunition, the army would be no good. So, depending on the knowledge, we know that if uh, suddenly there is something we cannot buy from abroad, we'll not be able to act. So, uh, here is where the strategic role of universities lies, and also other institutions, of course, uh, that uh, at the moment can be compared with the strategic importance of the armed forces. Also, there is a third role of universities, at least as we, the presidents, can see it. We want to be a part of a strategic system that will preserve the state. So, we want to participate in emergency plans using the gained experience. Uh, I'm now speaking about universities, but there are whole consortiums of companies collaborating with universities. So we now have an excellent base. Uh, uh, a platform of partners who can respond dynamically. This is what we want to transform uh, so that the, uh, the government can use it. Working under pressure, what we have experienced, 
and recalling conditions the state of Israel uh, is ex has been experiencing for a long time has also shown how we can simplify administration paperwork and so on during the state of emergency this has uh, worked very nicely and I would be happy if all these solutions could remain functional for a long time so that they don't come back in a yo-yo effect, uh, factors that would slow down uh, work. Uh, well, we all know we have our legislation, but we should remember that uh, over-regulation uh, too much bureaucracy slows us down. Even some grant awarding systems which are too slow in such a situation. And last but not least, I think there is also now a percentage, growing percentage of companies which see collaboration with universities as something positive. When I was a deputy dean in the future, we focused on how universities are seen as the right or ideal partner uh, for a company. And this was a very low percentage, while now companies can see that collaborating with universities is positive, as well as with the Academy of Sciences, so I hope we will be uh, or useful in this sense. Are there some take-home messages? Uh, I have uh, written 10 points that uh, characterize my current feelings. Let me share them with you. First, universities are a knowledge and competence base for handling crises. Universities, especially natural scientists, technical uh, disciplines can help to, to uh, develop new products, they must be supported. Universities should be financed uh, just as well as the armed forces. I spoke about ammunition. Uh, also, uh, to uh, handle sudden crises, uh, there must uh, be a joint plan of universities and the state government. Uh, all five, uh, there must be strategic capacities for predictable crises. There can be even unpredictable crises, but it would be good to uh, maybe do a mental research of what might be ahead of us. Uh, six, you need topical information about the situation of companies and universities to do a fast matching, especially in places where the network does not exist, so we can respond fast. For a rapid response, you also need rapid funding, so I'm not sure how to arrange it uh, by legislation, but you need some fast money that can be um, made available. In other countries, uh, this uh, has happened, uh, I think, faster than our system allowed it. But companies, universities, and the public uh, have helped, although that's not a system solution, so other possibilities should be found. Then for innovation and an adequate res response, uh, uh, we complain of uh, bureaucracy. So for that reason, you must minimize bureaucratic procedures. And when you invest into universities, you increase the strategic possibilities of the state at a time of a crisis when the state must rely on its own resources. This should be remembered 
uh, to be able to realize what scientific activities mean. And also, uh, each piece of knowledge can be used because none of us know what will happen in the future. Maybe on the 1st of January, none of us uh, really suspected what would happen. So, uh, we should not just guess uh, uh, which knowledge is more important than um, another piece of knowledge. That's why uh, knowledge must be developed harmoniously to be able to respond to future challenges. A co to bylo za problém? Závěr opakuje se nám tady nabídka, víceméně na celých tom nabídku na to začlení výzkumné kapacity do krizových plánů pro řešení budoucích jakýchkoliv budoucích krizí. The capacities, research capacities uh, for the benefit of solving future emergencies or crisis situation. Now, let us proceed to uh, Masaryk University that has been extremely active in activities uh, uh, trying to solve immediate and future uh, consequences of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Vice Rector of uh, Masaryk University. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to wish you a very good afternoon. And I just wish to say how happy I am I can present our involvement uh, in addressing um, the, the uh, societal aspects and healthcare solutions of pandemic uh, or COVID-19 pandemic. I'll talk about the matching or rather combination of uh, fundamental uh, research and uh, its translation into practice that is applied uh, research. I also wish to stress the importance of all national uh, assistance and the already highlighted uh, volunteering. Now, uh, now, let's talk about the mix of basic or fundamental and applied research. We have talked a lot about all kinds of uh, structures at our university. We have got a broad spectrum of portfolio of infrastructures, both from ESRI and national research infrastructures. And it has also been said that a university infrastructure i pro zdravotnictví, čili od počátku jsme tam měli akreditované zdravotnické zařízení a diagnostickou laboratoř podle zdravotnické normy 1589 a od začátku jsme plánovali, abychom mohli využít výzkumné přístroje, velmi, které byly velmi nákladně pořízeny, aby mohly být použity pro tu zdravotnickou diagnostiku v těch nekoronavirových dobách, například po, pro diagnostiku onkologických nebo neurologických pacientů. A tím pádem bylo poměrně jednoduché tyto pracovníky, kteří s diagnostikou už mají zkušenosti, tak trošku uh, jenom otočit směrem k diagnostice virologické. Uh, další výhodou byla přítomnost velmi kvalitních uh, virologů, kteří měli k dispozici BSL-3 laboratoř, takže v podstatě nic nebránilo tomu během krátké doby využít tyto dvě know-how virologii. Well, now it's okay again. So, we should launch full diagnostics uh, by means of PCR. Apart from the assistance provided to teaching hospitals and other hospitals, we've also helped a lot to uh, social welfare organizations to the city of uh, the city of Brno, municipal office, the diocese, charity, and other non-profit organizations when helping the homeless people, for instance, and their testing. Even though we were ready, um, fully ready, we had to elaborate or develop a brand new system for testing material uh, 
know, the best the option was to set up four teams, one for triage, that means receiving uh, of samples and record keeping, since, as has been said, often time we got it in a bucket with labels or request forms on it, then BSL3 lab, that was another team where the experts for diagnostics uh, fully protected uh, open the or uh, unwrap the samples and did the isolation or uh, extraction of viral uh, uh, RNA and uh, the most then qpcr and the most time consuming in terms of uh, administrative activities was uh, then the uh, registration of results export to uh, ISIN, etc i wish to thank marian hi sorry marian Haiduch and his team we also wish to thank many of you from a number of institutions for the Corona Test Hackathon, where we could uh, share information, share experience, exchange experience on the Slack platform throughout the country. We in Volta Jena makes core facility in particular in the testing activities and all we had due to uh, the initial lack of uh, material we developed in-house isolations or extraction method on uh, the locally produced components. Thanks to that, uh, we got involved uh, in the extraction of RNA development by means of magnetic beads. And we also work on other methods. Now, this method that we uh, worked with uh, with Charles University, Olomouc University, and subsequently uh, the result was our own technical method, which can be used not only on tapped for coronavirus, but for other viruses as well now. This uh, call, uh, now we work on a lamp, uh, RT lamp method that is loop mediated is a thermal amplification. And since we had a lot in the morning about PCR method, I'm not gonna uh, go into any further detail, but it also works with sob. It's based on the chain reaction, polymerase chain reaction. And we believe that it's uh, gonna be a method easy to evaluate, um, usable in field, etc. So these activities too uh, took place thanks or take place thanks to uh, all kinds of uh, research infrastructures and CLG trees and we guess that this new kit uh, will have certified. Uh, that means the kit for point of care testing POCT available with uh, IVD certification. Now, uh, many who uh, offered uh, access to laboratories for free, like for, uh, infrastructure for sector biology, and this uh, resulted in first publications of preprints and also further research of the virus is underway. So I appreciate this activity very much, uh, just like uh, um, activities with other research facilities. Now, what do, we had a model of epidemiological testing of population or 
a pilot project that monitors natural cause of the infection or disease. The first one in the first, uh, that is model of epidemiological testing of population, was done by, or also by Pavel Plevka, who is an investigator of ERC, MBO, etc. And he does uh, the testing, they do the testing of representative more sample of population for SARS-CoV-2 infection and also they are now working on the identification of that part of population that is natural resistant to uh, COVID-19. Um, now coordinate uh, uh, the second example that is uh, um, an activity or project um, coordinated by the Hayduk pilot project monitoring the natural cause of COVID-19 uh, disease or infection. So uh, the main uh, or primary objective is regular or rem regular remote monitoring of health status of COVID-19 positive persons, focus on the respiratory signs uh, then uh, to follow morbidity, mortality and consequences of the infection. Um, questions are asked concerning physical aspects uh, and uh, then societal or social impacts and we shall also have them tested for immune response or genetic information. This is a project underway now. And I believe that uh, it is very promising. It will uh, help us collect uh, valuable information. Information is uh, handed over to uh, the Institute of Medical Information Statistics. Uh, then I also talked about the Institute of Biostatistics and Analysis of Medical Faculty of Masaryk University and their assistance with IMIS uh, who process the information on the state of play or actual situation or health status and potential development of COVID-19 and all that under the coordination and leadership of Professor Dushek. Now, projects that in-house um, we announced called for thanks uh, uh, to uh, the internal in-house call of, by technical um, uh, center of the city uh, through Simplen. These are internal calls for proof of concept projects, namely rapid response by technology transfer office, a project concerning rapid diagnostics uh, by LAMP lamp method, uh, then development of online platform for monitoring analysis and management of epidemiological situations in real time, which is now underway yet another significant project is done by the uh, faculty of science physicists who develop special nanofibers uh, into the filters for filtration purposes or to be used simply in filters and we have anthropologists from our university who optimize uh, the uh, dimensions of respirators for children and adolescents in order for the respirators to fit. Now, apart from these rather science-oriented projects, there are many economic or social science-related projects like those focus on the role of the religious systems and uh, in the solution of collective threats associated with the pandemics, then social workers uh, related uh, things, then a uh, survey on uh, education uh, of children at home, from home, physical activity in the period of pandemics, etc. All national assistance uh, during the period of um, COVID-19 pandemic. 
We have been very active. Uh, there was a center, volunteering center, center of volunteers immediately, almost immediately set up, uh, which does play the social and societal role. Uh, it was set up on the 13th of uh, March, and it is still active, up and running. Upon the appeal of Martin Barash, the rector, huge number of persons interested from among the students, academia, general public, altogether 4,500 people worked as uh, volunteers. Uh, they offered to help to institutions as well as uh, to individuals. They have uh, processed or acted upon uh, more than 2,500 uh, applications or requests for assistance in Brno and other regions, and there was a collection um, organized altogether, 2,400,000 crowns were collected, and uh, then uh, activities, uh, it was used as a support for homeless people and other vulnerable groups. Uh, now, these are the collection tents. Uh, as you can see, without the assistance of uh, students of medical faculties, we could have hardly done all the co sample collections, and they also helped during the epidemiological study. Now, these uh, spots show the places where the volunteers came from, from all over the country, and that is something we very much appreciate. I'd like to express most cordial thanks to them now. They have, as I've said, acted upon 2,500 um, uh, requests uh, for assistance, seniors, children's home, hospitals, uh, elderly care facilities, uh, hotlines, simply, and also individual persons, like uh, elderly people in particular, ask for, uh, I don't know, shopping, uh, for, you know, arrangement or face, uh, masks, uh, delivery, and uh, picking up uh, drugs for pharmacies, uh, pets walking, take uh, babysitting, and so on and so forth. Now, assistance was uh, requested, especially in the uh, Moravian uh, region, but it was also rendered uh, everywhere else, including Prague. Now. What are uh, now all different faculties? Faculty of Medicine is obvious. Uh, that means uh, with respect to testing, tends and work at the region public health authority in regional or other hospitals. But also uh, the Faculty of Social Studies people helped a lot. They worked in the centers uh, for homeless, then uh, very uh, efficient and effective help uh, uh, was uh, babysitting or taking care of uh, children of uh, hospital staff. And that was predominantly done by uh, the uh, undergraduates of Faculty of Pedagogy, then Arts, uh, and uh, also of sciences, faculty of science, sports faculty or sports science faculty, organized uh, exercises or all kinds of activities for seniors and general public. The teaching hospital in Brno on the 13th of March was actually exposed to or was hit by cyber attacks. So no ID systems actually were up and running and that was a challenge at the time of uh, first patients coming in who were taken down by COVID. So as concerns media coverage, well, Generally speaking, it's uh, very mm, desirable 
to have all these activities uh, widely covered by media. Uh, statistical returns here, I mean, different uh, faculties uh, and the number of uh, the contributions or posts, etc., in media simply. People become more aware of the importance of such workplaces than uh, especially at the time of crisis. By way of conclusion, I would like to stress three aspects. Obvious became the irreplaceable role of uh, the combination of fundamental and applied research uh, in solving or rather trying to meet the needs of society. And now they started to work together which was a source of enrichment for the researchers or scientists, and it also helped tackle or solve the crisis and reflect the needs of the society. And the universities, as well as other academia, uh, helped a lot with uh, down to earth or practical things. Um, they acted also as advisory uh, teams or groups, and thanks to that, I believe we are ready uh, for all kinds of crises, uh, be it floods, drought, or whatever. Now all the organizations and institutions will be ready and prepared to respond. And the all national need or benefit of research infrastructure has become clearly visible, especially when it came to uh, the um, uh, role in solving acute uh, medical and social problems. And the third role of university, that means voluntary. Uh, by students, undergraduates, and scientists uh, has been highlighted. I guess we, to a degree, enjoyed it, and such a good mood and a sense of cooperation should prevail. Thank you. Thank you for attention, and I thank everyone whom we had the pleasure of working with to, in helping tackle this crisis. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy President, for introducing all the activities of Masaryk University. It's optimistic to hear that we are ready for possible future crises, emergencies. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to ask Dr. Radislav Selacek, who is the director of the Czech Center of Phenogenomics at the Institute of Molecular Genetics. So we'll speak about mouse models, not only mouse models. Ladies and gentlemen, so let me now uh, uh, get a bit away from testing to another level. Uh, as you have heard, I am from the Center of Phenogenomics. Uh, we are, I think, one of the biggest infrastructures in the Czech Republic uh, and also one of the three major infrastructures in Europe in our discipline. So we study gene manipulations to learn what individual genes do. And worldwide, uh, in a consortium C, we want to know what all genes do. We want to write an encyclopedia and we'll know what, these, what genes are good for. Uh, also, uh, uh, if we are interested in both basic and applied research. We are testing various uh, substances, future therapeutic substances with a number of companies. 
So, uh, when uh, we came across COVID for the first time, uh, I thought that Czech Republic became a manufacturing place for face masks and so on. So we decided to take another route. Uh, and testing was done uh, everywhere, and we thought we would concentrate on the future. In addition to testing, the Czech Republic has a very good base for making or developing new drugs, and uh, that is, we are even better at that than uh, testing. So what do we know about COVID? Not so much. It has been here just uh, for a few months. So maybe we were really taken aback by the situation. Millions of people uh, became ill and thousands died. When we look at the influenza, there, of course, uh, figures will be bigger, and Dr. Primula was right when he said about, uh, I don't know, 1,200 patients died um, in the past in a year. We know how the virus gets into the cell, how it uh, uses it, why some people die, and also, we know that because of the huge pandemic, many companies started developing vaccines and uh, medical drugs. So we'll wait uh, which vaccine will be really successful. Maybe additional ones will be developed. There are still other remaining questions. We don't know so much about the biology. Uh, so here, the pathogenic characteristic of the virus, uh, how it is it transferred, what the mechanisms are, how it gets into people, what determines uh, or drives mortality, and also which uh, drugs are the most useful ones. And what about the consequences? Uh, here you can see some other uh, questions, but mostly attention focuses on lungs. So you can see an alveolus, and you can see how it's surrounded by epithelial cells, and next to the alveolus, there is a vessel, which is very important, because this is how oxygen gets in, and then we can breathe, and the body can uh, uh, work. Under normal circumstances, the vessel and the system are integrated. There are factors causing there is no inflammation. But when a, a virus appears, uh, influenza or bacteria, the virus, uh, not only it gets into epithelial cells, but also into endothelial cells, and then they work much uh, differently. The s then coagulation of blood uh, also acts, uh, and that activates uh, cells, uh, which uh, then attract uh, neutrophils, macrophages, uh, cells of the immune system, and they cause an overproduction of cytokines, uh, which uh, usually uh, uh, terminate the infection. But uh, because uh, they propagate and uh, there's coagulation in vessels uh, and the process cannot be terminated, then the cells, uh, it's not that they would destroy the virus, but uh, then at the end of the disease, lungs uh, do not work, they become fibrotic. Uh, they cannot function properly. How does the virus 
get into the cell because of a specific receptor. Uh, uh, there is the HIV receptor and there is ACE2 in coronavirus. Uh, it's not expressed only in lungs but also in the stomach, in the GI, thymus, uh, testes, also in the brain. So when we focus only on lungs, we may miss uh, many other things, and the care of the patient will not be complete. So when we look at the two ways of entries, it's lungs and the GI tract. So uh, aerosol droplets uh, or also touch uh, food, and uh, uh, that's also very important because patients uh, who were uh, 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 who left the hospital and are COVID negative may still shed the virus in the stools, which is very alarming, as you know from various news in Vienna and other countries. They find the infection in waste water. <laughs> yes, they, uh, someone does it here too, okay. So I don't read all the papers. Uh, but the virus uh, is uh, then, uh, of course, uh, secreted, not just uh, breathing uh, or shed, not just breathing. It spreads in the body and it can endanger many other organs uh, because there is a huge uh, abundance uh, in uh, the circulatory uh, system. Uh, that means that it can uh, threaten all the organs uh, where it is expressed. It's bound to the receptor which otherwise has other functions to get into the cell. There is a so-called spike protein, and it has to be split by protease, uh, which is here. Here I can show again. This is a serin protease, and it's interesting uh, in the process of cleavage, there are also inhibitors. So, if you, in fact, inhibit the cleavage of the protein, it has a positive effect on the infection. So, spike one protein is a test and it's activated. And, uh, in fact, the virus can penetrate the so, uh, so this ACE is a protease, uh, which is very important to preserve uh, the angiotensin uh, uh, system. This is important for blood pressure and uh, for circulation. So, depending on where ACE2 is expressed, it has various roles, can be in the pancreas, uh, where uh, takes care of their things, and it can also be in uh, the kidney. So, it's important also for uh, excretion, and the ACE2 receptor uh, is controlled by interferon, which uh, is uh, useful in all the viral infections uh, uh, during the response. Interferon gamma causes A2 to be expressed more than usually. The second problem the receptor is that there is huge polymorphism, different in various um, Asian populations, American and so on. So none of us uh, is identical to another person, and the level of expansion and depending where the protein is, 
then affects the spread of the virus, of the infection. Uh, you have about 1,700 variants, uh, 62 are in the coding regions of ACE2, and 32 uh, affect uh, amino acids. So, there are studies uh, how these variants can contribute to uh, the disease. When we go back to ACE2, it's important to preserve a certain balance in the angiotensin system. Angiotensin is uh, cleaved into angiotensin 1. Uh, then two, and this is the active peptide, and ACE2 then carries on cleaving. Uh, but if you have um, coronavirus, uh, then the function of the balance of cleaving the peptide, uh, this situation is not preserved uh, and uh, the inflammation occurs. There are some other consequences. In fact, there are many. But uh, when speaking about the function of the virus and receptor in the bloodstream, uh, what matters is uh, that the virus causes an agglomeration of coagulation factors in blood, it activates macrophages uh, by uh, allowing the coagulation of PROS1 that normally causes deactivation of macrophages and uh, that uh, also uh, promotes a cytokine storm. So it's not just lungs, the uh, receptor is in the brain, heart, kidney, GI tract, in the gut, and uh, we don't know what it does in these various areas. We can only know what we know from SARS and MERS, what approximately happens, but we are still not sure <laughs> in um, SARS-CoV-2. To learn more about these mechanisms, we create animal models. But it's not easy, because an animal model should answer to the pathogenesis as we know it in humans. So we should be able to use it for testing of therapeutic substances. So uh, we have non-human primates, uh, various monkeys such as macaque monkeys that they can be used for testing but in the Czech Republic, we don't have a facility to use uh, this model. So, so it's extremely expensive. Uh, and uh, so these urine mouse models are used most frequently. Where we have uh, all of the molecular tools, uh, here they are again, what can be studied uh, in addition to SARS-CoV-2. We had SARS-1 and MERS from the same family. Uh, uh, three out of seven uh, viruses attacking humans. One gets to us via camels, other uh, via civet cats. So all three coronaviruses are very dangerous. Uh, there are some that cause mild symptoms, and they can be studied in various models. 
So, if you have non-human primates, uh, there are ferrets, uh, or there's also the pig, uh, but uh, it's also difficult to use. So, uh, uh, we can only use models uh, that we st that we have here, and that is mice. Uh, uh, but, of course, mice have a different ACE2, uh, so nothing much happens if it's not uh, immunocompromised or if it's not old. But uh, if uh, you uh, uh, have a mouse of that kind, uh, you can try to create an optimal organism that would uh, recap uh, what we see in humans. So, uh, these are excerpts from an article published last week. Uh, mouse uh, expressing human ACE2 and this receptor is expressed in the lungs. It has a promoter. The promoter is a regulating unit uh, uh, deciding where the protein uh, should uh, uh, be. This uh, was published uh, in the Cell Journal, but the tests were not too perfect. Uh, still, if the mouse has a human receptor, and we add SARS uh, to the mice, most of them die, some survive, uh, no one knows why, but the survivors, uh, when uh, the virus is applied uh, uh, repeatedly, uh, they survive with very small consequences. Uh, a similar model was developed using s cytokratin uh, 18. So, uh, again, you have the expression cytokratin, but also only in some organs. Then there are other models with a composite promoter. The problem being that the protein is expressed in a different way, but it does not correspond to the human situation. And here is the time axis. This morning I was asked how we do the testing, and so it's a genetically modified mouse. Parameters are collected. After two weeks, the mouse is killed. You find the pathogenesis, the analysis. In surviving mice, they get another dose, and you test whether the previous infection will affect the following infection. So uh, there were not so many mice that we could really use the data, but this model, when uh, you get the human ACE2 into the lungs, uh, the mouse is permissive, uh, viruses multiply, and the pathogenesis is similar to that in humans. And for the pre-exposure of the coronavirus causes, then in the second uh, stage, uh, if the coronavirus appears, it has uh, a beneficial effect. So, models all together. We can use non-animal models, uh, that means cells, uh, how the virus gets into the cell. Then, animal models, uh, non-human primates, uh, that would be great, but who would pay for all that research? Of course, there are special infrastructures in Germany and France, uh, then there are human primates, uh, which are held in a special facility, 
near an atomic uh, uh, power plant to protect the facility against activists, and then models that can be adapted to our needs. At our center, we were discussing how to do it fast. So we have a therapeutic application based on crispr uh, and thanks to viral vectors. So we used a vector and we uh, inserted the human ACE2 after one or two weeks. And depending on how many viruses we insert, these are other viruses, then uh, they again, uh, then again the human ACE2 is expressed in the lungs uh, and you can test uh, the pathology. The first uh, results from last week uh, show how the expression of ACE2 has uh, grown. The blue line, it's a control line, but it is positive uh, because if the human ACE2 is recognized, the murine one as well. That means that very quickly and inexpensively we can prepare an environment for testing uh, these substances. So it's really fast. The cohort can be produced very fast. The AV vector can be used for other molecules and we can test more pathogens. The disadvantage is certain variability. It can be done only in uh, the lungs. There is also a bit of a problem with the size uh, because large constructs are impossible. At present, if we had a site that would you want to use it, we are ready. Uh, we are collaborating with UHAB and other institutes, with also with the German side and an American one. They are interested. Now the sophisticated part, while other colleagues in the world created humanized models by taking a promoter that allows the expression of the human ACE2 in the lungs or another organ, there the expression is different. So using crispr guts, which is a technique used here, uh, we decided to uh, have uh, the promoter using exons which are transcribed and then we have the first uh, mice and we are testing the integration mice with human ACE2. CRISPR -Cas, uh, I must uh, mention our importance in the European community. You can uh, see uh, the diagram, the this is from October, but we manipulated over 200 genes, uh, and I think we are at the forefront in Europe. We serve scientists uh, worldwide. Uh, so you can see the Czech Republic is really important and international sites use our uh, results or our procedures. Now we are getting to the variants very fast. They are important and to understand all of them is important. So using our system 
when we get the human construct into a mouse, then we have uh, these uh, variants, uh, and then we can decide of what importance they are for individuals. Yes, I have to uh, wind up. So, what uh, is really available? Humanized viruses, uh, ACE2 knockout as a control for experiments, uh, TNP2 knockout, that's a transmembrane serum protease knockout. Uh, and we are now not thinking just of coronavirus. Uh, there can be influenza. So you have proteases which are important uh, for a virus to, uh, and uh, the cells. There are serine proteases, there are also inhibitors. Uh, uh, one is very important, Lacti, with 15 domains <coughs> inhibiting trypsin, trypsin activities. When you pick it from skin, then it's disintegrated by all the proteases. Now, the future a humanized mouse with an endogenous promoter then we can uh, perform variants uh, and also mutants uh, which are expressed not just in the lungs but uh, uh, also in other cells to co-create the entire picture of where the virus causes the disaster. So we have the B2 facility, but what we miss is state-of-the-art animal facility to study not just coronavirus, but also we should uh, focus on the future. So this is a warning, really. In the Czech Republic, we should have a state-of-the-art facility for studying various infections. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for your presentation. I got so overwhelmed or absorbed that I forgot to check the time, but um, even though I'm a layman, thanks a lot. Now, Professor Uraida has the floor, member of Executive and Supervisory Committee, Sersha EI has the floor. Uh, well, I don't uh, fit here because I'm neither a biologist or a biologist or, and we couldn't help anyone by testing him, her, or developing new aid or protective equipment or whatever or gear. Uh, but nevertheless, I wish to thank you for invitation and I'll do my best to uh, illustrate how important the social sciences, uh, societal sciences are for uh, grappling with such a, a pandemic. This is not the first time that uh, I speak here because the Institute of Molecular Genetics oftentimes uh, invites people from uh, different walks of life. This is obviously some sort of an old version of the presentation. Uh, we'll get back, we'll get back. I'll dash through the presentation. C can someone stop it or pause? Click on pause, please. Uh, because 
As I've said, I'd like to talk about what IDEA uh, platform did, that it's uh, Institute for Democracy and Economic Analysis uh, at the National Econ uh, Institute, National Economic Institute. So, now what is important? The pandemic uh, not only, uh, or apart other things, simply influence uh, behavior of families or households, etc., and uh, economy as such, and also a lot depends on what uh, consequences or impacts the pandemic has. We are supported by Academy of Sciences uh, under uh, the strategy AV21 umbrella. Um, and uh, you know we have all uh, we have high publication frequency uh, 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 fields and low publication frequency etc so we are certainly underfinanced but nevertheless let me talk about what we have been doing we were very enthusiastic about uh, this activity obviously um, together with uh, scientists we did uh, epidemiological models also then collected data on household behavior, 20 studies and recommendations, uh, and, and that was done by the NERV National Economic Council, then Economic Advisory Team of the Central Crisis Staff, and of the, uh, of the Economics Institute of the CIC, Czech Academy of Sciences. We have simply uh, decided to, to use uh, our models and we as a matter of fact so develop these models over the period of one month from scratch and they are only collaborated now um, we had to work with a certain limited number of data, but it might be useful for the future, like local closures, school closures, adaptive ORP closing, or three different age groups, um, then the municipalities with extended powers approach. We have got a number of uh, models, one uh, being the all national uh, model, uh, all population model, then uh, the blanket and uh, network agent model. But the perspective uh, or the method is just as important as the allocation of sources. Well, one thing is uh, allocation of uh, limited sources uh, in the network agent model. Sorry, the speaker is a bit so to say incoherent, so, sorry. Well, uh, the blanket measures were launched uh, in time, which was extremely important. Had it been one week later, there would have been extreme difference in the total number of infected persons. This is also derived from the state statistics or registration or comparison of regions. If you uh, close uh, Spain or cut off Spain, then uh, there is a major difference as well. So. The timing of blanket measures was of uh, great importance. Uh, now we know that uh, blanket exponential uh, distribution may be prevented, but that uh, we had not known then. And also we managed the CIR models. These are with the exception of uh, the network uh, network uh, agent model or agent based network uh, it all depends on the number of respondents and the area covered uh, this is uh, dynamics of the risk of infection by individual context category. But household survey 
provided us with current or up-to-date uh, information about the course of the crisis. Some other data will get uh, due course only. Now we know that one-fourth of uh, households uh, suffer from experience a major drop in income. I don't have time to talk about that. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there are many households that are ready or willing to save because if there is drop in exports and investments, and I'm a member of the National Economic Council, I can assure you that investments in R&D and innovation, that means into the uh, activities with added value, represent the right answer solution. If everyone saves and households as well, then it'll be far too bad. So. The economy will, um, so to say, um, collapse. So, naturally, households that uh, have lost or are afraid of losing a job and are afraid of uh, a second wave of the epidemics uh, try to save. If you assure the public that all the measures and procedures are effective, uh, it um, will subsequently economically restart the economy, but um, and that can be influenced by the behavior of uh, state authorities. One of the question was uh, how much would you uh, spend if you were uh, I mean, families with uh, small children uh, would uh, spend uh, let's say most of the money and the multiplication effect would thus boost the household consumption while uh, retired people or uh, public sector employees who have not lost their jobs I haven't worked less during the crisis Certainly not. So uh, the, uh, those would uh, save most of the money. This is an example, and that was in case everyone was, or the families were given 15,000 crowns for the family. How would they spend it? We got uh, roughly 20 studies, part of them focus on allocation of tests, uh, and then studies on the behavior of uh, people, simply behavioral effects during the pandemic. Uh, in March already, uh, this, well, these are studies or excerpts uh, from uh, literature. Uh, one of the first studies clearly talked about the new type of uh, recession uh, which uh, will derive from an artificially, so to say, um, uh, artificially invoked situation. In March already, we also uh, did uh, recommend postponement of payments of, for Social Security and health insurance. Uh, earlier than anywhere else in the world as soon as in March. We also suggested uh, some insolvency proceedings, uh, procedure adjustments or amendments. Uh, that's important than how to test for COVID-19. Uh, I know uh, this uh, we are delayed already and networking is essential, but this is just to show how f households behaved, how they adjusted to the measures, goods are bites or shorter hours, simply short time work, non worked hours, and what sort of an impact the crisis will have. Uh, this might soon be um, published. Uh, saying that her exposure also uh, invokes or rather causes or uh, um, magnifies hostilities against foreigners, etc., which should have been prevented and infl inflaming and different sentiments. Well, uh, this uh, is 
is a uh, education, remote education or education at home as seen or viewed by the parents when kids are cut off from the school. I am sure you do know that a lot depends on the family background or family situation, com interruption of uh, education, whether caused by COVID or longer summer holidays or whatever, teachers on strike uh, only open up the scissors between uh, the kids, depending on the family's background and setting, and the effects are major, have a long-lasting impact, uh, lifelong impacts uh, and effects, etc. So these are things we should focus on. And it did uh, result in some recommendation about uh, tutoring or how kids should be perhaps uh, tutored at the beginning of next year and so on and so forth. So this is uh, to show what social scientists, what the men or women spend time by and it's, it's done under the umbrella Ministry of Health. I might uh, quickly touch upon the following. Isn't this a sort of a trade-off? That means a trade-off between health and economy. Had we not imposed blanket measures or all national measures, the economy would have been better off. Um, I could speak about that for some time too, but it doesn't seem to be the case. We should be I mean, prepared and ready uh, to prevent by contact uh, tracing, location tracking, and partial closures uh, um, uh, to prevent, let's say, next wave. Denmark, for instance, which uh, the, did what it did, I mean, obviously, when people are afraid, they uh, don't send kids to school, they don't uh, go shopping, etc and young Swedes who could attend restaurants, uh, uh, the incidence or drop in um, consumption uh, was not that big in Denmark as against Sweden, where people die in old folks' homes, etc. So, and thank you, thank you for attention. I wish to repeat that uh, social scientific uh, um, uh, research um, certainly does uh, deserve to be supported in the future too. Thank you. Thank you for uh, introducing us into this broad topic. I do admire all the studies. I enjoy reading it. I wonder how you always find a new topic or identify a new topic to be explored. Uh, but uh, now, even though we should have networking and refreshments, I can't resist. Uh, I have to ask, is there a question? Does anyone want to have a question or two or not, Mike, please? I just wish to quickly respond uh, to that research uh, with in relation to waste waters. I come from Greg Masaryk Research Institute of Waste, but first of all, I wish to thank Mr. Malik for stating that it's not only academic sciences and universities who do research, but that there are also public research institutions or organizations, several dozens of them do exist in this country. And we have also participated in the fight uh, um, uh, of, of uh, COVID-19 uh, um, pandemic uh, or against the pandemic. 
And we have been conducting research, quite a major one, uh, thanks to which uh, we can decide about the partial local closures. Uh, we can uh, see or identify whether there is an imminent second wave or round of uh, pandemic, etc. So I just wanted to say that uh, uh, our role in research is uh, certain also justified. Um, the Minister of Labor and the Social Affairs. Well, one uh, measure um, that uh, should be taken and that would help start up the economy, I'd like to ask about Mr. Uranda. Namely, there should be support given to building nurseries, nursery schools, schools, etc. What would you recommend to be taken? One measure only. I know it's um, a tricky question. It would take two hours to answer this one question, but thanks for that. Anyway, look, uh, once uh, people with mid, uh, so to say, qualifications uh, come to the market, uh, there are people who who have lost any expectations. One week, once we get uh, approach to these people, it, it will all de depend whether we'll be able to offer proper jobs to them. We should, uh, I mean, people uh, should get uh, better qualifications and secondary, secondary. Education for free should be introduced and also availability and affordability of distance learning for kids from uh, vulnerable families or disadvantaged settings should be. Um, uh, I mean, should be offered as an opportunity. We can talk about it later in details. Any more questions? Anyone wants to ask? Or if that, oh yes. Jiří Marek, Jumzarok University. I wish to ask whether anyone from Mayas or the council could tell us um, uh, how the importance of open science was illustrated at the individual universities. Does anyone want to talk about open science and what have, I guess we have already heard it. This was covered in some of the presentations that a number of articles that were uh, printed or published uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic was actually uh, published in open access uh, form. Well, uh, this again is uh, a tricky question. It's very general. It's difficult to answer it in um, brief, to give you a brief answer. Uh, Mr. Rushak said or showed uh, the European perspective of open science, open access. Open science is an interesting concept. Open access, um, uh, I believe. Uh, uh, as has been said by Mr. Hajduk, who introduced a large uh, RI uh, based on open access. The availability of data, sharing data is essential because the pandemic has uh, this uh, wonderful and horrible effect, meaning that it applies to everybody. Therefore, necessity to share becomes obvious, uh, whether we call it open science, open access, simply it helps. Thanks a lot. And if there are no more questions, I would only like to sum up uh, briefly.
After having listened to all the presentations, uh, we heard a lot about uh, lessons learned. Oh, what what um, did the pandemic tell us about research system and structure in the Czech Republic? It has clearly pointed at the readiness, flexibility, and preparedness of Czech uh, research. And also, uh, we have a number of people willing to volunteer and help in the fight against such uh, pandemic. And also, uh, proven was our readiness and willingness to cooperate across the individual industries or sectors. That's the good news. And also, we heard that research and research uh, capacities built and uh, developed and supported are very relevant, highly relevant in the societies, so the investments are viewed as highly important and relevant. Now, what uh, would the research need from the state uh, in order for it to be able to keep playing the same role and keep developing stability? Uh, stability in the form of predictable policy and uh, stable investments or expenditure on R&D so that they don't have to compete and fight for new funds um, on an ongoing basis. And the last thing that uh, impressed me, trust, trust. Trust and confidence, uh, uh, believing that uh, simply the scientists do the work well, do it for the benefit of the general public and not for the sake of having their articles published in international journals. So, by way of conclusion, I'd like to thank the organizers from the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports in cooperation uh, with uh, the um, Research and Development Innovation Council uh, Conference, uh, Czech Rector's Conference, and Institute of Molecular Genetics, Academy of Sciences. I'd like to thank all the speakers uh, who presented in the morning as well as in the afternoon. Perhaps we should also uh, express thanks to our interpreters uh, and and also, I wish to thank you for very active participation and thank you for staying with us until this uh, late hour. And I apologize for not uh, simply sticking to the time limit, but we are not that much delayed, so I do hope it's fine and okay. That's it. As far as I'm concerned, thank you. and. Uh, now I'd like to invite you to the lobby to some refreshments and uh, networking, or I called it uh, networking or um, informed discussion, whichever. So thank you once again, and I do look forward to seeing you again in the future.